You're, 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 we're episode, episode nine of season two, and we have the lovely Kixie Jixie with us. Yes, Kixie. What's shining, everybody? What is really good? <laughs> I hope y'all brought that energy today, because I am ready. I'm right. so ready. It's good to be here with you guys, Danny. We are glad to have you. Word. Right. Hella, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, um my booze. I know you guys for so long, so I'm really, um, right. I'm like glad to is, be here with you guys. This is OG sneaker game status, like when we first first started. Man, do you remember like when we first met? I, you know what? I really like. I don't I, like. I the only person I remember the first time was Jody, because it was at a the sneaker show in Philly. Oh, and because she, her and Danny had this thing going on, and I was just on the side somewhere. <laughs> uh, that's wow. usually how it is, isn't it? Yeah, I can't remember. I, I, I can't remember. Yo, it's, it's like we've been family for so long. We, right. We but I just remember, the only thing I remember is the first time we met, it was just like we knew each other already. Just <laughs> like, hey, we family. Let's go f get food. And yo, like for real. For real. Like, yo, I'm going to hang on you right now. I'm like hanging on y'all. Because y'all know the way I walk. I be banging into both of y'all. <laughs> yo. Oh, as introductions go, I am Hella Lace, a.k.a. The Best in the West. Uh, it's your favorite customizer word customs, a.k.a. Problem Child, a.k.a. Soon to be your female sneakerhead winner. And I'm <laughs> Danny Nicole, a.k.a. Caramel Wonder, your Tata Sock Lady, and yeah, that's about it. <laughs> And I'm Jasmine, known as Jixi. And furthermore, on social media, y'all know me as Kixi Jixi because I fucks with the kicks. You're. <laughs> yeah. That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, right? She got a few shoes or something. She something. got a little bit. <laughs> a little something. It's a little. Danny, you want to start with the OB Pressed? Um, so, yeah. Wait, for the uh, Wait. I was going to say, we should leave that uh, the Monique one for the end. I think, because we probably discussed that the most. Uh, well, that's what I was going to talk about. So yeah. Gonna... So okay. I throw, I, throw, I I put a couple things. Uh, so I was looking at the because uh, since we're about to uh, head to Cali and you know about to be the first fight since the pandemic, uh, I saw that on Southwest they had a little incident where a woman got a little drunk and assaulted a stewardess and ended up like I guess messing up her face and knocking out two of her teeth. So now Southwest has banned alcohol from their flights. And following suit, uh, American Airlines is banning alcohol, except for in business class. So uh, apparently Southwest, the CEO said that they had like, what was it, 477 passenger misconduct incidents between April 8th and May 15th, which is crazy. What is that, like a month? Like that's, why, why, why is this much people, stuff happening? That's people coming out for COVID. Yep. Oh, uh -oh, the that. only. Oh, there we go. That's not the only wild thing that's going on in the world. Like, there's just so much. People are coming back out, and the energy is hectic. Yep. And it's like, you know, I'm I'm trying to stay away from all that. Like, I I see it already. So it's yep. like, and it's in everything that we do. You know, it's it's not only in in the airlines. Like, it's just like, look at how much shootings. Like, New York is. If it wasn't raining this weekend, this weekend was gonna be like. Yep. RP in New York, like it was gonna be wild. So it's like right. it's just the energy. People just gotta come out and and relax. I know it's like we just came out of COVID, but you gotta relax, B. It's like I, a little too much. I don't get it on a plane, like you know, from the movies and stuff. You see the whole air marshal thing and like how serious they take you into captivity on the plane stuff. I'm not trying to do nothing on the plane, but get to where I need to go. So I don't yeah. know why people's turning up. And uh, me, the way I pack, and I be trying to watch my sneakers, because, you know, I be a bitch got to carry her sneakers, like, right on her side. So, right. you know, yeah. ain't nobody trying to drink while transporting a bunch of, like, fly shit. Because, you know, you take fly shit on vacation. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Fly shit only. Fly shit check. only on vacation. If you check in your bag, you're doing it wrong. Do y'all, do y'all, like, when you go on vacation, do you have sneakers, like, that you want to buy to take on vacation? Or do you have like a vibe for when y'all picking out sneakers for vacation? Yeah, I'm, I, I don't even know, like we're leaving Wednesday and I don't even know what I'm taking. 
it's like you want to take so much or it depends like for me because i feel like we're going to la i want to take a bunch of Kobe stuff or a bunch of lakers stuff you but see but like, that's you see but you're trying to pick out you got a theme right so it's right like, yeah that's some real sneakerhead shit like you know you gotta uh, right. you got a whole concept but that's like me when i go to miami guess what miami nights south beaches like you know right. you're gonna have that mood you know so flies yeah. you're gonna have a little vibe so i dig that my my question to the southwest assault is is was she served the alcohol on the plane and how much did they serve her? work good, good question i didn't look like it didn't give too much in depth to the article that i looked at so it makes me wonder like what she because it i don't think it was i don't think they were in the air when it was happening because what you did, you took six shots in a row in 10 minutes and beat up a stewardess right. like that. Right. I mean, sense. you get drunk, you get drunk in the airport while you're waiting for your flight, though. Because I heard there sense. was a lot of delays when I was looking. A lot of people who were going to Houston for the Kai event, they were delayed oh. on their flight because of weather. So, you know, you get a couple of delays and you hit in the bar. I mean, them drinks expensive, especially at uh, LaGuardia, man, like $15 for uh, a vodka and Coke. <laughs> like, thanks. But. Well, lucky for them, I'm not a drinker, so. Right. I don't drink on planes anyway. Deuces. So. Deuces to your drinking cause, people. Right. I, I, I like to be on on all yeah. uh, 100%, so no drinking for me when I'm, when I'm flying. Uh -uh. To be well aware, I like to sit in the, the aisle seat because in case I don't got to pop off, I got to be able to get up out of here. I'm walking over people's heads and everything. I'm out. Right. <laughs> Well, in keeping with that theme of crazy stuff happening, uh, on to Florida, where, you know, Florida's been pretty much open for the most part, in my in my opinion. I don't even think they knew that there was COVID. So there was a <laughs> concert, concert promoter in Florida for a punk rock concert, and he decided that since the governor declared um, that they can't use uh, vaccine passports, he outlawed it, like no discrimination against people who don't want to get vaccinated. The Ooh. Florida promoter made the tickets for people who are vaccinated eighteen dollars, and those who are not vaccinated one thousand dollars. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, we're, we're capping with the have, tax. You know, that's, they have every wild. right to. They have every right to. If that's how you want to run your business, and mm -hmm. you know, you want to maximize and on people who are not vaccinated, cool. But if you want to keep people safe, yeah, you vaccinate everybody and throw an event where you, because the next level is right. If you don't, if you start having events and people catch COVID at these events, who's to say people are not going to start suing left and right? They right. can't. I don't. Can they? That's a question. Now. So depending, the right? Depending, the because if you if you breeding uh uh if you breeding a playing field of of illness, at some point, yeah, you will be responsible for it. If it's like a real deal, like like if you go in somewhere and it's a super breakout and the place is known for having illness, yeah, at some point you're gonna be responsible for it so we it's just a, a matter of time before we go into that next layer of business right, layer, right. so but it's like i would think I, I won't be going to that concert needless to say i'm not vaccinated yet so um i, I won't I be going there since since florida has been pretty much open during the ham the during the pandemic during the, the pandemic and the pandemic during the height of when COVID was the transmission rate was elevated people were going in and out of places during that time and you didn't hear of like lawsuits you know what i'm saying and the vaccine wasn't ramped up yet for everyone to to get it you know what i'm saying so it's like how how can someone sue a business for contracting covid when the vaccine one is an fda approved so it's not it's for emergency use only so if the government is, isn't liable for being sued for the makers of the vaccine being sued why are business owners being held liable for being sued it's not business owners it's if you're it's if it's with any disease not only COVID. if you have any business that is spreading a disease that becomes a public health concern any illness so make believe it's not COVID. make make believe is e coli salmonella if you catch salmonella at somebody's business and a lot of people catch it at the same time you go to a restaurant everybody gets poisoned with it they are responsible these places are responsible for your health so COVID is just something that hasn't been put into any insurances and anything yet to protect businesses and people, but it will be, it, it will be soon. So it'll be something, it, just treat it like any other disease that you can catch somewhere, you know, it will be. Right. So the hard, the hard part is because now with, um, you know, they lift like restrictions we, for vaccinated. 
we're winning yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, it's it's a wing it situation because now it's like I wonder how it works. Like, like oh, if you're vaccinated, you can be in this section where you can be close. If you're not vaccinated, you have to be in this section and still keep distance. Like, you don't but know. Like Charging somebody a thousand dollars because they haven't gotten the vaccine is almost like discrimination. Right. I mean, it is. It's his it way is. to deter. He said he basically it said, is. but I got something for them. I got something for them. You ready? You ready for what I'm up on? You ready? I'm trans vaccinated. <laughs> I feel vaccinated. You, you identify, I identify as vaccinated. As vaccinated. So right. therefore I am vaccinated. vaccinated. So you're going to discriminate against me and I'm a trans vaccinated human. Right. <laughs> that part. Bruh. It's all, I mean, I, I predict that. It was a hair, hair flip. Bit for me. Because so they're going to lose. They're going to lose. They're going to lose money. They're going to start losing money because there's so going to be too many people who aren't vaccinated. That's my rebuttal to that. My rebuttal <laughs> to that is that if you could change anything, you know, you change gender, race, religion, you know, like the woman in Switzerland, I can't get over her. The, she's a white woman who wants to be black. So she gets black uh, mel uh, mel melanin injected into her so that she her color skin changes. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about? The crazy thing? I know she is. Yeah. If she can pass in society as changing something, I am trans-vaccinated, and nobody's going to question that. That part. <laughs> we'll see how this plays out. Uh, Dirty said it's kind of a business's right to to not serve Absolutely. everyone. I mean, it is, but I guess it's something Absolutely. with this. It's like a, a discrimination. Like, I mean, when you think of, you don't, you have the right to not serve, like, oh, you, you know, it's like the no shoes, no shirt, or, you know, simple stuff that you can, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where we're going to go with that. Well, we're going to go with sneakers is the answer right. and the cure for all. <laughs> so within the theme of the COVID, uh, we have Mr. LeBron James, who, you know, I love, but that's on the court. Off the court, I mean, you know, his antics have been become a little crazy but he was uh in violation of the covid uh the nba covid protocol he went to a what tequila event with uh was it drake or whoever he went to an tequila. event prior to a game and right. nothing happened but then uh what was it poor zingas he went to a strip club and he got fined fifty thousand dollars so my question is, how is this okay? Why are people not speaking up? If I'm poor Zingas, I'm like, so LeBron paying half this? Like, I'm not understanding why LeBron gets away with everything. I mean, we know why, but like, how can they just be so public with it? Like, it's like in your face. Like, if I'm a well, player, like the, the, the well, us as the audience, you know, whatever, but as a player, if I'm paying 50K and LeBron ain't paying nothing, we gonna have a problem. Well, y'all know yeah. that Le there's LeBron, they got a, set, a different set of rules. <laughs> so... <laughs> Am I really going to be like, yo, why LeBron don't pay this? No, I really ain't. Because I may not be playing in the NBA with the amount of power that man has. Oh, right. His name should just be NBA. It shouldn't even be LeBron. His name should be NBA. Because without him, they ain't got no NBA. So Basically. on that note, you know why they ain't finding him. Even his own teammate, uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name, but his own Schroeder. Schroeder, is it? Schroeder? Whatever. He had, he was like uh, in violation and he, I think he, he missed a few games because of it. So it was like what all these people are getting in trouble, but not LeBron. Again, he is <laughs> LeBron, LeBron James, <laughs> LeBron James. He's right. LeBron. Ain't nobody going to tell LeBron nothing. Ain't no teammate going to tell LeBron nothing because it's a privilege to play with him. So it's like, you know, it, it's not even, they not even going to sit there and, and even talk greasy against the God. And we shall not speak greasy of the God either. <laughs> he do what he do. He do what he, he do. He do what he do. I just need to get some new South Beaches in my life. That's all I care about. Right. Facts. I keep missing. All the, I care the, about I missed all the UK new drops. South Beaches. I'm here for these new South Beaches. I need Miami Nights. I need Miami Nights too. I'm salty about Miami Nights because I paid a grip years ago. A grip. For so real? Is, a grip. Oh, Miami Nights were at two, two thousand at some point. They was up there, so it's like to see them now at retail is just. Wait, was that was that the pair that Be More had? Yes. Oh, I was like, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, we just had somebody Be More. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, here she go. Wait here a minute. she go. Let me just let me shut the tea away. Let me clean them up. All right. Look at this. This jerk off. Yes. Yes. Boom. Take them out. Take them out. And I, but those, those I was catching. I remember I bought them for two hundred and forty-five dollars, 
And I bought multiple pairs. I bought me, Jim. I bought all of us pairs. We had that. That the prices went up for sneakers right after that. Right, right. after that sneaker, that's when hey, the prices started going all the way up. So it's like that year, bins was still easy to cop. Three hundred, two hundred, Lebrons, two hundred, three hundred. After that sneaker, a little bit more. The shit went crazy after that to what we know today as as our right. sneaker resell culture. Like, mm-hmm. I literally just got the the original pair uh like last year sometime. So that's how long I was waiting for the price to to go down. I know but, everybody was out there copping all these like uh beat down pairs for like four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I can't buy a beat pair of sneakers for five hundred. It just will never be me. No, no. Yeah, that's facts. You get a couple wears and then your whole soul explode. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> facts. No thanks. Right, on to my last topic before we get into Danny's topic. Uh, so, you know, we're always talking about Jordan and everybody's always comparing like what he does or doesn't do for the community and what LeBron does do or whatever. But if we recall, uh, Jordan and Jordan brand made a statement where they said they were going to give out a million dollars for the next 10 years to different, you know, different uh, programming and organizations. And he's holding true to that. It seems that he gave a million dollars to elevate the scholarship programs for technology. What, what do you uh, mean? <laughs> to uh, Morehouse. Yo, so Jordan Jordan does a lot for the streets. Yo, I put mean, it like this. The streets, like we know that. Wait, the streets <laughs> would not even know Roman numerals if it wasn't for Jordans. <laughs> <laughs> no cap. <laughs> like that sh- hello. Our, between hello. that and the Super Bowl. Between that and the Super Bowl. Hello. The definitely streets would not know Roman numerals. numerals if it wasn't for Jordans. <laughs> Jordans are educational. There's a lot you learn off of some J's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, salute to them for giving money to Morehouse. Um, yeah, it's a great it. cause. I mean, it's not going to be long before somebody complains about that because Morehouse is an all male college, so I'm sure there's going to be some problem with that. Maybe I don't know, but whatever. Salute he gave to a a black college. That's dope. I mean, this is just one college, right? It's, right. It's, it's just it's just one, right? Right. But you know, you know how it goes. I mean, is this yeah, but like, I mean, look, oh, oh, you know, Morehouse educates black men, like well, power to educating our black men, like don't right. be foolish, like that is right. that is amazing to keep pushing forward, and the more money they give to schools like that, the more they can pull in the young men who need financial assistance, the young men who need to be in those spaces, so it's like that's where people need to look into empowering is through those kinds of organizations, so. You know, anything that contributes to pushing, you know, our people of color forward, that's what we need because we in a system that's crazy out here for us. Absolutely. I agree. Now me? I am done. So, Danny, you can go on with your portion. The spicy, spicy, spicy. Y'all be pressed up. It's not really spicy. It's just, you know, voicing my opinion. So our lovely uh, comedian, Monique, you know, deemed herself as the auntie she was on uh social media basically chastising women who travel in the airport wearing like bonnets and slippers and pajamas or have themselves wrapped in blankets talking about some if she was to run into any of them auntie basically herself auntie was gonna tap them on the shoulder and say that we gotta do better mind you while she's delivering this message on social media Full camera view for everyone to see. She wearing a dusty ass ash. <laughs> she got to set it off, Cleo plaques, and then twist it to the side. So, Auntie, what I want to tell you is I'm gonna tap you on your virtual shoulder, and I'm gonna point out where you're flawed at. Like, who are you to tell people how comfortable or, or uncomfortable they're going to be traveling? Like, you don't know what these people got going on in their life. If I'm traveling on a 6 a.m. or 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. red eye flight, I'm not going to be in full beat, you know, red bottom heels, uh, dress and corset that I can't breathe in. Like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, who are you? Like, all this coming from a grown woman that calls her husband daddy. I've got questions. I've got questions. I really feel she needed an attention grab, and this was her opportunity. So I'm going to give her time to death. <laughs> oh well, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> let's see, Monique. All right, so you know, I give Auntie her respect for being a 
a full figure woman first and foremost you know for being plus size snaps for her and being at the forefront of comedy acting and the things that she does do i feel like she has a point yes and the point is that i took away from that is because i always look at the bright side of things and i don't look at things too literal i try to take away from what people are seeing and observing and saying and to me what i notice is it's like when i go to the supermarket right you see these young girls in the Tweety Bird um, pajama pants and the Jordans. And it's like, yo, mama, put some clothes on to go outside. Like, represent yourself. Show up for yourself. Fix yourself. And it's like, you know, we have a culture right now where some stores, like, workwear in stores are completely, like, canceled, right? So now it's only loungewear. Like, COVID has changed our, our retail space. Right. So it's like now we extra comfortable out here, but how comfortable, right? So it's like, I get what she was saying. She was saying if you out there in slippers, bonnets, pajamas on flights, that that's a platform and that's a stage where everybody's looking at black people, white people, all types of people. And what she's trying to say is show up for the culture. So I kind of felt her a little bit, but it's just like anybody who complains and you too old is the joe button effect you coming off like grandpa or grandma <laughs> so it's like stop fucking complaining already you know let let sure. the young people be but it's like i think i remember when my like elders used to complain about the things i wear talking about you know when we used to wear our slides and shit like oh go put on some you know go put your sneakers on don't wear those shits in the street always like talking crap so it's like you know we giving it again to the youth but i think the youth need to come generation z is they need all the help they could get. But all the help they can get. If it wasn't 6 a.m., maybe. Like, because it was so early, I'm like, all right. Like, because we have a 6 a.m. flight, and, uh, you know, I know I'm not trying to be all day. Like, Bobby in, like, some sweats and, like, a hoodie or something. Yeah, I always but, buy me a sweatsuit to yeah, fly. So and, I and get I, it. And I do my hair, and I got my blanket well, and shit. Say, you know what that person is going to do. Who's to say maybe that's True. not all they have in their closet right now? True. Say you don't know True. what their financial situation is, or they just may want to be comfortable. And if you're going to judge a book because she got on a pair of PJ pants, like you got bigger problems. Oh no, I think like for Monique, it's like, is it the time for this? No, no. right. I think there's so much other th ways she could use right. her platform, but like you said, some people need attention, they need clout, and you know, the same way in the sneaker game, you know, people need attention and clout. Monique still need that too in the comedian game. Yep. I agree. I agree. Well, I guess we'll just sit back and wait for the next thing that he complains about, you know, okay. about how she's not getting a spot on a Netflix show or in a next Tyler Perry movie or whatever it is she wants to complain about. Grandma. It is what it is. Like, you, you outdated. You know, you had your moment, Parkers and all that good stuff. Precious. The now, grandma effect. On. Right. She ain't funny no more. She just gotta take it for what it is. You ain't funny no more. That's facts. She ain't so plain, uh, Monique, no more. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> oh, she was no. in Soul Plane? Yeah, she was a security oh, guard. <laughs> that movie was terribly, terribly bad. It was so, yo, it's so funny, yo. Like, I could sit and laugh to that dumbness all day long. Like, it's so funny. Between, I'd rather like, watch uh, Snakes on a Plane. Oh, that's my shit too. There's some motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. <laughs> that's my show. Those are my movies. I like I like movies so dumb that they're hysterical. Right. Not Danny. I gotta watch those movies by myself. Oh, Danny, you like intellectual rom coms? Like did you did you like Twenty One Jump Street? The old one. The the, the movie with the Mm -mm. Wow. Leave, leave that shit wow. way back where it belongs. <laughs> leave it. That's leave funny. it. Don't come fast forward to me with none of that stuff. <laughs> what? Like what? Like and... Wonder Woman stunk. Uh, I was so disappointed. I was like, what the hell? There's like a, a recent movie too that I was like, how it just ends like this? I forgot which one it was. <laughs> I think it was like Go King Kong and Godzilla. And I was like, how you just end like this? And first of all, how you make King Kong, you know, sigh now? Like, how he does signs, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> y'all evolved him a little too much for me. He's over here communicating. It's like, he's supposed to be, you know, smashing things and fucking shit up. And y'all want him to communicate. <sighs> modern day. Let's go. Let's talk about something that makes me happy. Y'all breaking me right now. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, you want to hear what, uh, Sneaker Corner, the uh, Union? Union LA? 
the collab that everybody seems to be waiting for uh, finally got not a def- definitive date, but a month. So like uh, coming in June at some point, hopefully early June, because I don't got time to be waiting. But the uh, the tent and trail with the um, what are the uh, what are the two colorways? I don't understand how people go ham for the Union Jordans, but Union Adidas, nobody fucks with Union Air Max. Bleh, them shits are still retail there, out there. I, I've never even uh, seen. No, I gotta look them up. Oh, the Desert Moss and the Topaz. So the yes. Desert so. Moss will be on Union and Sneakers, and the Taupe Haze will only be on the Union website. I copped the Union Bape Adidas, right? So it's a it's three-way collaboration, right? Mm-hmm. A Union Bape Adidas. Some shit's a fire to me. There's the X8000s. Cop those. Oh, a little bit over retail. Them shits came out two years ago. Nobody cared about them. Nobody cares about them. Nobody still cares about them. But the Jordans come out, and, pe- and people right, are just hype beasting. You got right. it handy? You got it handy to show us? I don't think I've ever seen it. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll admit I probably only found out about Union maybe. when the ones came out. When the ones came out, and then I, I figured out. <laughs> so I took out sneakers for, you know, to. I have this thing where anytime I'm invited on an interview or episode, whatever sneaker falls on my head is what I'm bringing. And that's how I make sure that I don't bring like the same sneakers <laughs> over and over. So that wasn't one of the sneakers that fell on my head today. Ooh. And because I'm not like you guys with all the uh these the drop fronts, I'm right, still she's sta- the OG boxes, I'm, boxes. There's a name for it, guys. There's a name. I'm still <laughs> I'm still stat gang. So because I'm still stat gang, <laughs> I, drop I got a hun- I got four hundred stacked. You know no, what I'm saying? No, no drop fronts. I'm mm-hmm. a st- I'm still stat gang. I'm from the stacking era. So I'm gonna call it get a tech gang. That's what we're gonna call it when everything falls on you and you break well, your head. This was this was a conversation that I wanted to have with you because you were expressing to me like, um, T, you was telling me like, um, you was pointing out some women that collect sneakers, mm-hmm. that that it's really something that's out there. It's called and shout out to them White Shelf Gang. Mm-hmm. So, oh, right, right, right. so shout out to White Shelf Gang because they're the ones that are they're grouping up by aesthetic and how they display mm-hmm. their sneakers. So. Yeah. You know, before you have gang of women who are grouping up by either where you live or by the sneakers you like or who you affiliated with. But now right. on the Internet, they're grouping up by the aesthetics, which is fascinating. That's the evolution of culture. So now you got white shelf gang. So it's yep. like I'm stack gang. I'm from the stack era. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. I can't bring myself to have like my shoes just out that gang. like. Like are, like, are they dusting these shoes every day? Are they rotating them out? I just feel like, um, I feel like as soon as I take my shoes out, they're going to get dusty, period. It's funny you ask that because um, Liz B. Croft had went live on Instagram. This was a couple of days ago. She was just doing like a mental health check, you know, talking to people about mental health. Shout out, Liz. So there were people in the comments asking her to show some of her shoes. So she briefly showed the shoes and she's uh, uh, the, the white shelf gang. And they were asking her, you know, how does she keep them clean? So she's she was like, I literally dust my shoes, you know, like every two days. She was like, because I'm I'm like, you know, OCD like that. I like to make sure that everything is clean. So I'm pretty sure people who have them set up that way, because they always look really nice and clean when I see them in pictures or when they're on live. They're probably dusting frequently and they probably have some sort of like HEPA filter running in the room, you know what I'm saying? And constantly well- the what air. I will, what I will say is, Liz is probably <clears throat> one of the very few domestic women who has her sneakers in white shelf. That's not a domestic thing. That started internationally. So right. women overseas generally do that. Their air quality is very different than ours. Right. They're also right. very suburban, so they're not as um like in the city where I'm at. My shit would be dusty daily, and I ain't fucking <laughs> dusting the sneakers daily. That's that's what it's too many it's, it's enough i could never even rotate them like for the seasons enough like so it's like that's just not happening no. but i do appreciate the aesthetic and how it looks and i think it's beautiful mm-hmm. i just can never get down with it ever right like, and like, i'm too um, anal about it too like right. if i feel like my sneakers are in danger or they're in harm's <laughs> way i'm like doo, 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 doo. i got the construction team like yo walls here uh, there like well i like what um i don't know if you follow two one five shooter you know jerome yeah of course well, i like um i like how he has like the two ikea shows like those uh it's like what four or whatever and he rotates out the different ones like he has them by his uh computer desk so it's like you get a nice display but you don't have all your shoes just out 
So like I could go for something like that where you have like a setup, especially if you're doing like podcasting. You, know, you yeah. have a setup behind you with your shoes out, and you can rotate That's them out. That's nice. I but, prefer a good old fashioned baker's rack from BJ's. Um, you could fit a hundred sneakers on them, and I need places that I could fit hundred sneakers easily. So right. I need little pockets of a hundred sneakers all over the crib because if not, it's not happening. Right. <laughs> So I think it looks great. It really does. And shout out to them. And shout out to Liz. That's the homie. But um, I think that, you know, it takes a lot of work. That's a that's an extra layer of work. Yep. So no se pueden. I can't do it. I can't. I can't. <laughs> so we move on. Let's see. What are we going to get on to next? I mean, I guess we could, we could get to the sneaker con then. Yep. <gasps> that's Girl, what I'm please. here for, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know if anybody in the chat was at Dallas Sneaker Con or knows somebody that was at Dallas Sneaker Con or knows the ins and outs of what happened. But all we know is we saw, you know, a girl fight going viral inside of the Sneaker Con by a table, two girls scrapping on the floor. I don't know what yeah. started it, but it's uh, it's crazy to me. Like, I've heard of situations where people maybe, like, because, I mean, we witnessed with T-Mark, the, the, the two brothers tried to steal his sneakers and he had right. to hem them up, but it wasn't like any blows thrown. You know, they got thrown out immediately. So I've never witnessed a physical fight, you know, maybe just a verbal argument or, you know, some words or whatever. So it's crazy. And and when I was watching the video, it's like, I mean, I know they don't have security, but it's like nobody really tried to stop it. They should like, have security, though. They they really should. Like, they, like I, I think heard it was over like a T-shirt or something. That's but it's like, all right, crazy. where's that? That's in Dallas. That was in mm -hmm. Dallas. Yeah. Where, where's the OGs at, right? Where's your OG women at, right? So right. it's like, you know, I have, to, I have to put a little bit of blame on to like, you know, where's their sense of community, especially these young people, right? So it's like, as women, right? We go to these events, we fight. Look at how be that shit becomes headline before anything else at the event. Like, that's what took over. And that sets us back years from how far <laughs> we've come. Yep. And it's like, and they're two little girls, you know, they, they, they were young women. Mm -hmm. They probably had smoke for some dumb reason and they felt like they needed to represent their themselves. But it's just like in the sneaker community and, and sneakers in general, we've had to fight a long time to be respected and to even be in the building. So it's like, you know, while you out there, make sure you showing up for other women. So it's really important that women come out and show up for each other. Right. And make sure that they know we pushing this this shit forward because it's like that's a detriment to yeah. uh, to me and you know it's just like <laughs> at this point what are they really doing right at these yeah. and like why are they moving so fast we're even having shows right now like right. yo they just opened this shit up and all of a sudden it's like well, I mean, yeah they wasn't the time tech, Texas was had been, been started yeah. relaxing their their restrictions oh I saw a minute. And I was mortified. I was like, oh, what y'all doing open so early? It just because of what we went through in New York. So it was like, yo, we went through so much in New York. It was like, yo, I, I ain't ready to see all that. But, you know, what are these like? I remember when we used to go to um, sneaker events, right? It was like, uh, we go see what we find. We cop some shit. We look to see what's new, what's interesting out there. We see our friends, we group up, we click, you know, we enjoy ourselves, we take pictures, we celebrate community, we bond over sneakers. Like, that's what it was. Like, the last few events I went to um, had a lot of YouTubers. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was just very different. And I didn't see the product. I seen the same shit that people resell all over, but I didn't see the pieces. Right. And I used to go to sneaker shows to find pieces, like right. rare shit that you couldn't find in right. stores. And I think that was... You know, that was key. But like now you have these people. Gucci's up, as you know, as you know. But, you know, you got people who they out there, you know, they, they out there for the wrong reasons. But it's like Generation Z sneakerheads. Who's schooling them? Right. And that's I feel like with the larger sneaker events, like a sneaker con, a soul exchange. You see a lot more of the same repeated stuff over and over. That's Yeezys, Travis's, like, with the, whatever with is the newest. The I don't want to see a Yeezy, not one Yeezy. I don't right. want to look at them. I don't want to look at the funny looking slipper Yeezys. Was it, I don't was it the look last Dallas? Them. Was it the last Dallas we went to where there was just a table full of like the butter Yeezys? And the butters yeah. weren't even hot, but they had like a hundred. No, that was DC. It was DC. 
Yeah. Not, you sure? It was DC? Mm-hmm. Thank mm-hmm. You. I mean, but it was like a hundred pair of butters on the table. Like, these things were popping. And I'm just like, bruh, like, nobody wants these butters. Like, stop it. I, I feel like at the smaller scale sneaker shows or events, you find you, you have a better chance at finding more organic yeah. ones yeah yeah i feel like yeezys are like air force ones right now like everybody gotta have a pair they mm-hmm. in the hood they in the streets they for the streets you know what i'm saying they're like they're that sneaker hey, that you want to feel like you want to feel like you're in a dope sneaker but you're in a yeezy so you feel like you down so no like real talk i sold every last pair of yeezy 350s i had with the exception of one that weren't customized because every time i went back to my old hood I will always see some dusty, linty pant, pajama pant bro with ashy ankles wearing with, them. With a tech suit on, with a Nike tech suit. And it disgusts me. So I was like, yo, I came home and literally put all my Yeezys up for sale and sold them all. With a Nike tech suit, like you're... Like, like from the Bronx. It's, just, like, it's, from like, the Bronx. The, the, it's like the typical, like, uh, you know, they just throw on the Yeezys with some tights with the see-through that you can see their underwear, which... Hopefully they're clean. You just don't know. It's just like it's just, it's such a turn off, bro. It's like, bro, what are y'all what are y'all doing out here? Look, but, I, res- um, I respect that. I just remember the day that people were spending twenty four hundred for zebras on in Soho. Bro, we sold we sold a pair for the rate like like what was it, like seventeen hundred. The first pair of zebra Yeezys was yeah, my size. Yeah, yeah, I hit on I hit on her size, and right after we sold it, a week later, they were like, "Oh, by the way, we're dropping more." I was like, yeah, ha, 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 salute ha, ha. to the person who bought those because that makes me laugh. <laughs> but it's like, damn, to spend that money, like you know what? I still respect seven fifties. So I still respect Yeezy seven fifties hard body, which you I hardly st- see or any V ones. Right. I respect some turtle doves. You know, there's a right. few. There's a. I few. don't know the last time I seen a pair of, like turtle doves. There's pirate a blacks. few. There's a few, and then there's also um, the Quantums. I think the Quantums is dope. No shade to the Bronx. I love the Bronx. I was just playing, but um, <laughs> no shade. I got a lot of friends in the Bronx, but um, yeah, no, it's like it's a lot of um. In Brooklyn, they dress like scammers all day, so don't feel offended. In Brooklyn, they wear the, they wear the. Now it's the McQueens. Now they got the platform McQueens. That's the new scammer sneaker of choice. <laughs> like in this week, scammer sneaker of choice. But what I was saying with the sneaker, I'm like, I feel like um, we need to move like to how Diddy has the little, the little Black Weekend with uh, with the revolt. They need to have like a sneaker. Like if if sneaker con was annually, like one, it would be a way bigger turnout. Two, you could have it like a three-day weekend type thing where you have like seminars. Like they could have a custom panel and custom classes. They could have like OGs educating. They could have maybe an authentication class where you know certain things to look for. Like different stuff like that that would educate people. Because I mean, yeah, people do want to go there to buy stuff. But like you said, usually stuff is too high, uh, too much of the same stuff. Uh, Two J's is buying up everything before you get a chance to even touch it. So... You know what are we really there for? Like for us, it's like we're going there to to link with each other, to talk, to have these conversations, these stories, these dinners. So you know why not just do those type of events where you know you have a whole itinerary and you can attend what you want to attend. And take it a step further, and from the other perspective, our memories, right? So right. now those things are part of our memories that that are very special to us, right? Because we've made some dope memories at a lot of these events and people don't really understand it, but it's something that we all kind of like understand. So it's like, you know, from the opposite direction, being a part of it, it, it has been uh, amazing to be a part of the growth and to start off at like, I remember when I used to go to Sneaker Pimps. To me, that was one of the best events ever. Sneaker Pimps was an annual event like Sneaker Con, mm-hmm. but they would also have a concert. But the way they used to decorate and their decor was crazy. They used to throw a big ass um, fences and mm-hmm. tie grails onto the whole. Now they can't even do that. Niggas be walking out with them shit. <laughs> right. But they used to tie all the SBs, everything on the walls and just have it there for like the visual effect and it was beautiful so and it was crazy because i remember one sneaker pimp i just seen most deaf chilling there i was like what up i seen spike lee chilling there what up so it was like the who's who of sneakers would be at these right. events and you know more we exclusive and, and, what, and more limited pimps was the shit and then dunk exchange back in the day was the shit i remember when dunk exchange used to do um <sighs> the Funk Flex, the car show. Oh, the Funk Flex car, car show? Bro, that was my introduction to, like, sneakers. That's where I first saw my... I was in the That's battle. where I first got turned I on was, the customizer. I was in, I was in you know what? And I've probably seen you, because I used to go to the Edison one. 
So was the Edison one you used to go to? I went once and I was in the sneaker battle. Mm. And um, it was Joe amazing. Had this, this collection there. But, yeah. It's amazing because these are the things, this is like, this predates sneaker con. It predates, you know, mm -hmm. everything that we know now. And that, you know, like that 05, was. 05, 05, 06, early. Uh, probably. I think this, the Funk Master Flex even earlier. Because I remember Cause, when it, I remember when. Mm, I know that was the summer. The summer was the Portuguese festival, the maybe. PR parade, the Portuguese festival, maybe something PR like parade, that. and the Funk Flex car show. That was yeah. That always told it. Funk. That was always August. The Funk mm -hmm. Flex. Mm -hmm. So those things were dope. So it's like that becomes part of our history, part of memories, part of old culture. But now we shall evolve again. Like I didn't like the Complex Con digital, the digital rollout of Complex Con. Mm. Like yeah, the I didn't even. I didn't even. Nah, I didn't. So you I, sign I, up I, for I don't, it. Like you sign up for it. I'm on a little map. Mm -hmm. I'm going into the little stores on the little map. I'm clicking in to get in the store. I'm waiting on a line. I am now in a store where I can buy product. Product sold out because <laughs> bot guests got there first before <laughs> right. me. So it's like that was the virtual way of doing complex con. I appreciate it because yeah, I tried, but AI will never. Especially right. for sneakers, right? Because for us, mm. it's like, it's the smell of the sneaker. It's, it's right. the whole, it's that experience with a sneaker, looking at it in front of us. Like, we all seen sneakers digitally. That shit is not moving us. It got to be in person. So right. I, I didn't think it was as dramatic as it is in person. Complex Con is way better in person. But I've I never, appreciate I've never been, but I that go. they tried the AI. They tried to go with this. So I appreciate right. it. Well, I think, is a sneaker con doing like a virtual thing this weekend? Or something like that. I think they were doing a. I don't know if it was this weekend or when, but they were doing a virtual thing. I don't know. Oh. I, I like. I'm not oh. trying to sneaker con. Like mean, even though they're having physical in person shows, they were doing a virtual one. I guess because their shows are like kind of far. I guess they can't be in every state because every state is different. But um, I do know that they have Phoenix in October and they have Cleveland in December. I think I'm gonna try to hit at least one of them. Uh oh, she's taking out. Oh my bad. I'm taking some AMX. Oh, that Damn, didn't fall on your head, though. That didn't fall on your head, though. Is that Japan? Y'all yeah, don't know. You don't know. You're not up on the 350s. So these nah, only, these are, they're paying respect to all Air Max 95s. So it's like right. the old neon. You got the red. These only released in Japan. Right. These last Maxes that that I, I took out. but That ain't fall on your head, though. What? That didn't fall on your head. It didn't fall on my head. No, it did not. Not at all. I'm she taking them out. Her, her arm accidentally extended. <laughs> my arm, my arm accidentally just just reached for them. But I love me some. Um, I love the international releases. I feel like they're just more attractive lately than what we have right. going on domestically. Right. right. I I think with um, with, when it comes to the shows, I think that people essentially are gonna get tired of them because like. It's just it's just a show of just resellers showing mad product, the same product, and basically you don't even get a chance to even get in there to see the product to buy it because you have one or two people that come in there and buy tables out. So it's like, what is the point to go? So honestly, like the last couple of shows that I even went to was Hello Over. I was just there just to meet up with my with my folks that I don't see physically, you know, on the daily. So honestly, us as a as a community, we we really don't need the shows. Like we could do this ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Like we in the trenches, we we know what's popping. We are the culture. So why don't we, you know, put it on our own shoulders and and take it and run with it and see where it goes? Well, we always need the extracurricular. I think it's gonna change due to COVID. It just hasn't changed yet. I think they're really trying to still make their money. But we will see. Like, I have no idea where it's going to go. I mean, it, it is possibility is everything. But I guess right for right now, they're going to continue with it and see what it do. Speaking of overseas, oh, I just got these, bro. Oh. Yo, these are so clean. Like, shout out to the homie Stay Puff. I had uh, I made some uh, Nike ID, the dunks. And we both had this Crayola, what the concept. Stay and Puffs. I got through. Stay yeah, I got that. Yo, fire stay with that dollar. fire, that overseas fire. Fire so, for a uh, dollar. I hit on the both pair that I wanted to combine and swap it out to do a what the. So, you know, I hit him up immediately. Like, I would send him the second pair. And he was like, oh, how much I have to send you? I was like, don't worry about it. Like, he's a guy, like, 
you know, Danny asked him about his lights for the TV. And next thing we know, a package shows up with like five packs of lights for the TV. <laughs> like he's just like, a, uh, he's just like a good dude like that. So he sent me these for the, the dunks. And because he had two pair, and these are like super dope. Oh, yeah. There's a women's pair, there's another pair. Like, I'm trying to find it, but I can't find it. But these are amazing overseas only. Oh, no, I know 313, 313, 313. I know, uh oh, 313. I know you appreciate these. She probably know, she probably looking for it right now. But they're like the, the worldwide Air Max 90s, the Katana, uh, right? Katana, Japan, super dope. All right. Did you jump back in? Yeah. Gucci, Gucci, uh, Gucci, to the court. No, that was me. <laughs> so what had happened was, was that I went to look at the chat. It distracted me. And when I hit the chat, it kicked me out. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so keeping in with the, you know, the overseas theme and how much their, their stuff is better. How do you feel? Cause I know I've seen you with some Sia's. How do you feel about the independent artists like Cool Kai and Saya? Because Cool Kai did a Houston pop up this weekend, yesterday and today. And I mean, when I say people camped out and the line was ridiculous, like down the block, like those people, like it, it's crazy to the extent that the people will wait. And mind you, he just did a membership thing. He did a membership where you can get a membership and you get early Ooh, access. Oh, Cool to Kai? Shoes. Yes. He did a membership. <laughs> wait, so you're not, you're not for the Cool Kai's? So, I am for independent customizers making their own sneaker. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. Making your own sneaker, right? right? So, to me, that's design, that's concept. It could look like and favor another sneaker. But I, we got enough Jordan 1s. What I want a cool Kai for? <laughs> Like, I can't even look at another one. I'm bleeding ones. My eyes, when I cry, I cry ones. Crying ones, literally. Like, I can't uh, anymore. If so I'm not mistaken, because like, he linked with Sia, he's working on his own. But, you know, so, that's a little bit of a longer process. With but, Sia, uh, right? So, with FBCC, wow. if if y'all been rocking with, you know, those are fire. But you FBCC, right? Before was Sire Collective, FBCC was showing you how to customize your own sneakers, right? Mm -hmm. I know about Angliss Paint because of, of um, Devlin, FBCC, mm -hmm. because that's what he used to promote, the products that he used to promote for yep. des um, designing your own, you know, fixing your own sneakers. So he used to do restoration classes, design classes. Like, he came a long way. He came all the way up in this community. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's different than a cool guy. That's different than somebody else. That's somebody that's like, word, you come out with a sneaker tomorrow. You from the sneaker community. The sneaker community got to support you from the inside out. So it's like, I'm not going to sit here and I don't need another aesthetic that looks like a uh, Jordan one. So to me, the cool guy, what I do respect is that the colorways are definitely something that Nike doesn't do, right? They put yellows in their high tops. They put these colors that teals. They put these color combinations that don't really exist in a Nike colorway. I appreciate that. But am I going to sit here and wait on a line for it? You smoking. You smoking. That's to show you how many friends he got because the friends fuck with him. But Well, I think, I think the quality, they say the quality. So I can appreciate because I'm pretty sure anybody can make better quality so when you talk Nike about, at the moment. you know, Yo, I you needed talk those, about, bro. I when needed you talk those. about Sires in the night, I hear the them 808 talk. Heartbreaks. Call I'm so the mad. story ever told somewhere far along this road. He lost his soul right. to a woman so heartless. Like, first of all, the theme, the concept is amazing, right? This right, is right. how you really, Just this is how you the really. suit pattern. This is how you really, like, you know. And I love the idea. Like, to me, this is always too close movie. to a Nike check, though. But right. to me, the meaning of it, culture right. vulture, meaning right, that right, the right, sneaker right. brands took from the culture, like mm -hmm. what the sneaker means itself is just something that's beautiful. But right, right. I think to me, like this is this is the Saya piece of pieces, right? So right. to me, what I love about Saya is the you got the, the Newports way, too, right? Yeah, I, girl, went in, went in with that. I'm I'm can't speak about it. It's a trust the process thing. So. Women's concepts. I don't know how y'all feel about women's concepts, but I think like throughout the years, it's been watered down, right? So the more women cry, oh, we need, we need, we need. They've given us like concepts that are like 
But what is that? So what I respect about Saya, like this sneaker was just phenomenal to me, is the Bride of Chucky. Oh, the Bride right? of Chucky. Right. Yeah. So first of all, this this material, the leather is amazing. The yeah, the quality. sneaker is is an Italian made. It started in Italy, but they finish it in China. So like the even tongue, the sock liners. The like, tongue is her. The tongue is dress. her wedding dress. Yep. So. The beauty of this sneaker, which I just I have to like show you, the tongue is her is her wedding dress, so that part is amazing. Then you have the tattoo, her Chucky tattoo, mm -hmm. right? And then you have Gucci, who's like right here. Excuse you. <laughs> then you have yo, he's literally like right here, just looking up, like sitting. Then you have I see you, Mush. Go with that. So then you have her fishnets, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So you see her skin and her actual fishnets. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. the flesh zone. Now he's sitting on, under me. Then you have her nameplate that says Tiff. Oh, the, the chain. Yeah. Yeah. And that oh. goes on the sneaker, right? So, so now this this embodies Bride of Chucky. This is a woman's concept. This mm -hmm. is something that's like I cop the the socks. It's like super dope. So mm -hmm. it's like. This is a woman's concept in 2021. If it ain't coming like this, fuck, I want a cool Kai to this? Nah, you smoking. Don't smoking <laughs> out there. They smoke. I no no comment. They La smoking. Last time we last time we talked about him or or our voice our opinions, it was it was a lot of uh of of, of the fans coming through. I, I mean, I, bought, I, I I ordered a couple of pairs because I like his colorways. And I heard the quality is amazing, but like nah. I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna wait in line. But I, nah. you know, I got the membership, so I can get them. Like I need his lupus pair. Yo, for I'm real, not for Jordans. Huh? So I ain't about to do it. For right, me. that part. Like I'm not waiting in line for anything. But yeah, with Saya, it's like a whole other level of his Saya concepts. Is, like the, his concept is material. He's a mad. Design. He's a mad genius. He's it's mad texturizing. Genius. You know, it's just it's a good quality. It's something different. Like so, right. you can't compare. You can't compare what's being done with uh with a side collective to mm -hmm. uh to what's being done with Cool Kai and who's the other cat that's doing the Jordan looking ones, you know? Who, but oh, it's well, just I wasn't Warren, but uh, uh oh Fugazi? Fugazi 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 that one. There's another one. There's there's a few people uh, that's out there. Oh, there's a uh, there's Donnie Buck too. I got I got a pair of his. So jokes. there's a few people, but you know what? At the end of the day, I'm always gonna see what like me. I like concepts that, and I, I'm a materials and texture and. Technology performance junkie. This guy. I mean, this is definitely a straight dunk, but I just liked it with the gum bottom. I was like, I'll check it out. It's interesting. It's it a very like interesting. Crop. It's uh, it's called the Snake Eyes, so it has like the two yeah, guy it's a, dice. It yeah. looks like Domino. It looks mad Puerto yeah. Rican. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's called like the it's called the Snake Eyes. <laughs> All of a sudden, I instantly want to sit at a wooden table and play dominoes. <laughs> Yeah. Want to sit down like and I just throw it. the dice and like do this? That's what I want to do. You just but, yeah. What's crazy with Sia that. is that he ha he has like all the like he's got the skate team now. Like and he picked his skate team, he flew him out, he put him up. You know what I'm saying? He took him to dinner. The he had them at the house. The packaging for the Newports comes with like a frame. It comes with the ashtray. It comes with the lighter. It comes in the Newport box. That's the insane. the quality of the hoodies that match that is amazing. Like the chenille patches are like this big and they are so like it's heavy like his hoodies are so fucking they're like coats so it's like yo it's good quality so it's like none of y'all is competing out, out there with none of that so it's like i i want to see what what more women's concepts he comes up with because i just think that the bay was so fire that's the brighter chucky mm -hmm. that i'd love to see what's next but i did cop the chuckies i got the got a few things over here i got a few saya like i go i went saya ham last and these are from last year this was all 2020 so they just rolled up not too long ago because i pre-ordered a lot of them yo it's, it's gonna it's gonna be crazy to see what i he ordered the denim the black denim pair um and i think they got another pair i can't remember i think i ordered three pair the duck the hunts. Flies, the i got one. the duck hunts the duck I really want those. I really want those Kanye yeah. ones, man. The I'm duck so hunts way. the duck hunts are fire um with the orange <laughs> and they come with the cartridge hmm do they fit true to size? Yeah, they do. And the Chuckies too. The Chuckies, um, the Chuckies are um amazing. The mm -hmm. the thing is, is you feel the quality on them. So some people, when you buy true to size, you don't want to feel like you gotta break them in. They're sneakers that they right. feel like very durable on you, like you know, in yours, because it's the same one. Like it feels durable. So it's like you gotta really break them in. 
So I've seen people go a path of size because they don't want to go through that process of breaking them in and making them feel like super comfy. But yeah, just get a get a shoe stretcher, I guess, if you got to. But they're wide but, width, so I love them. I think they fit yeah. perfectly. That's why when I was looking at them, I was like, yo, they look nice and wide because that's like I have a wide foot. So I was like, this should be perfect. Oh, but, but they're yeah. phenomenal. I might, have like, to, I might have to bring these to Kelly. Like when you're talking about, you know, ah, there you guys go. When you're talking about like material, you know, presentation, his boxes, everything, like, right? It's just really dope. So, even like the soul, like he got his name on the soul and everything, making his own souls. I saw like, um somebody who I got to hold in hand and, and see the um the VB ones, and oh, I was yeah. like, oh, the, the leather on this is insane, and I saw his backpack. I'm like, yo, uh, VV2 Galaxy, those are beautiful. And the glow on his sneakers is unlike any glow, other glow right. on anybody yeah. else's sneakers. And I appreciate that the glow, you know how Nike only does it on the clear? Yeah. Like, they don't have the colored soles. His are colored soles with the glow. So he'll have he'll have a solar sole that glows. He'll have a green sole that glows. So I appreciate them small things. I appreciate that the trimming on that bay is all 3M. Mm. So oh. that I didn't even point out, yeah. but that whole sneaker is 3M. So when you yeah. actually you go see crazy it, with the 3M, the glow, yeah, like, like come on, yo, come on, those, don't talk to me about those, no cool those, guy. Those those color changing, like the the symbolist dunks were dope, but what he's doing with those dunks, like, don't the, talk to me with about the no cool the camo, when, the when, our, the when our glow is now solely glowing in different colors, get out of here. <laughs> don't talk well, to Pixie me about is, another one. Pixie is firm in her beliefs. It's science. firm. No, I it's just like this. let's push con let's push concepts further. Let's go. Right. Like, don't show me the same thing. We supposed to be flying right now. Like, I want to see sneakers that got us like in the like the Jetsons. <laughs> <laughs> it's twenty twenty one. Why are we not like the Jetsons flying Kixie, around? Casey, what what would our world look like if we was able to fly with our shoes? I don't even want to see a the lot of robberies. I'll be out. I'll be like. <laughs> It'll be a hot mess in the streets. Right. Okay? I'll be like, yo, I'm late. Like, first of all, you ain't flying no. Shoes. You ain't flying no. Yo, I gotta Gucci, gas up Gucci my Gucci ain't with the shit. Gucci ain't You heard? I'm gonna be like, yo, I, I'll be there late. I gotta gas up my Air Max. <laughs> <laughs> gas up her Air Max. Yo, that's where we supposed to be already. Like, we mad late on shit. So. Masa shoe was pretty cool. Yeah. I like I like his shoe. Yeah. I, I like haven't gotten shoe. one yet, but I like his shoe. I just like that everybody's branching off to try to do their own thing. And, you know, I mean, because the chances of hitting on sneakers now are slim to none. And this oh, what like plastic? Somebody bullshit. wrote, the only thing about that I don't like is the cheap shipping in the plastic bags. I don't know what plastic bags. Ooh, Unless bags. it's apparel. Because the only thing I've ever received. Yeah, I'm going to say, mine came in a box. If I ordered a hoodie or a socks or something, it'll come in a plastic bag. Mm. Sneakers, I've only received them in boxes, double box. Right. Only place I receive bags and shoes is from freaking overseas. What the fuck shit? <laughs> mm. I got the Rayquans, the only built for Cuban links. Mm -hmm. And I received it in a big purple bag. And I was like, where the fuck is my sneaker box? And <laughs> I had to go to the blogs and, mm -hmm. and look at it and see that it truly didn't come with a sneaker box. And my head has been fucked up ever since because... It's the only sneaker I own that don't come in a box. And I just uh, You like, ain't gonna get one made? <laughs> it's an eyesore. It hurts me. Like, I just don't know what to say about it. It just don't belong in the in a plastic. First of all, it definitely doesn't belong in a plastic. That's like a breeding ground for mold. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, wait a minute. Uh, you so come in no box? That? So what do you, what, with that said, what do you think about the people? Because I think someone was saying something about it before, about people putting their sneakers in Ziplocs. Inside it's the box, it's a breeding ground for plat for mold. <laughs> Let, all right, they need the one on one. Your audience don't need the one on one. Your audience definitely don't need the one. -on -one. I don't think I don't think our audience is doing that. But there, there were people asking questions about people. So, you know, they pull their shoes out the box and zip sneakers. Box. Sneakers are made of leather, which a lot of them are, which is skin, right? So leather is skin, right? There's also cardboard on the bottom of sneakers, right? Paper. Um, there's also paper materials on the cardboard, right? On the on the plate of, of all sneakers, right? Whether we can see it or not. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, cardboard boxes is breathable. So your sneakers can breathe air mm -hmm. through cardboard boxes. When you start putting them in these shits, there's no breathing. So the colors start changing, right? Mm -hmm. And then also when you put them in plastic and you take the air out, 
now colors will start changing and then areas that have paper right oxidation 101 yep. and then if you have moisture in your home or in those bags you start to breed mold and you start to breed bacteria and if they really look at a lot of old sneakers they're fucking full of bacteria it's crazy so it's like i did this with a friend we were freaking in her lab and she was like i just want to see what one of your old sneakers looks like it was disgusting it was like black light it was just nasty it was like oh. <laughs> oh. organisms so motherfuckers, so what they don't see organisms everywhere right. <laughs> like so, so you heard it you heard it here folks keep your shit out of plastic bags <laughs> so it's like yo first of all I, I drill holes on the back of these right to get more air that's not enough for me i'm taking the doors off of them so slowly right. but surely i'm taking the doors off i'll think about doing that um they just need to breathe more and i don't care what people say oh you could drill holes that's not enough the whole cardboard box is breathable so you can't sit here and tell me that that's enough it's just not. And also like polyurethane, it, it when it heats up, like if your apartment is very warm or your house is very warm, it's not temperature room controlled. This lets off, um, it lets off a, uh, oh, not an odor, but it kind of puts something in the air when it's heated. Right. So if you Google really good about the actual um, material, you'll see there's a lot that is like, it's not worth having your whole crib lined in them when what sneaker was it? I think I had a white, like a leather dunk wedge. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It's one of Nike's most amazing white leathers. Because mm -hmm. last year, 2020, their white leathers were garbage. Yeah. Every Jordan you got that was white leather, tumbled mm -hmm. leather was like, what the fuck is this? Like, I couldn't even, like, they ruined some nice sneakers that I see with that leather. So some of the leather started changing on me and uh, the colors. And I was like, nah. So I just put a bunch of whatever's in them now. Usually my rotation that I'm a beat. So a lot of the time I just throw my beaters in here. This is like the, I need to put my sneakers and keep it going kind of vibe. And then I have my sneakers away. And then when I want to just like have sneakers around because I'm aware of them, I'll just throw them in here. And these are like, whatever. Mm. That's my rotation. That's how I do it. <laughs> how I do it. All right. So. Well, we could uh, we could talk about battles, or you could show some shoes first. What you want to do? Oh, we can talk about battles since we're talking already. All right. So, uh, you know, the mature kids are in an up and coming battle in the trap house. Uh, it's an all female battle. I'm sure you're congratulations. Aware people, people people were nominating you to battle. Um, but what are your feelings on you know the, the sneaker battles going on in general? Uh, you know, female battles. Uh, unisex battles, judges, audience, all that good stuff. Battles are definitely essential to culture, right? So it's like there's sports that we mimic our sneaker game off of, right? And then collecting sneakers to me is a sport. So mm -hmm. battling is one of the ways to participate in the true raw culture of sneakers. So I always feel like battling is necessary, you know, having a having a level of arrogance about your collection uh, uh uh patriotic about your collection right like you fuck with your shit right you know right. that's really where you show that um do i believe you need all women battles to push women's culture forward eh, no so i think that for me like personally like it's just me i like to battle men because i i never thought that battling women is fair because no and it's not because i murder them but it's because i wear a men's size of sneakers so it's not fair for me to battle somebody who's not been able to buy the sneakers that i can fit so it's like why would i want to sit here and battle somebody who doesn't have half of the collaborations that i have because i'm able to indulge in men's sneakers so it's like you know, when you have that size differentiation in foot already, you already at a, at a lower pace because you don't have the collection or the product to really put out there. There's some great pieces for women, but it's not as much as men. So then... When it so comes up I'm to here, men... So what I'm hearing is I'm going to win the battle, is what I'm hearing. No, so no, because that. you know what? Sometimes, like for me, like I've won battles with... I won battles with a cheap sneaker, a $75 sneaker, because people have never seen the sneaker or it hasn't been right. around. Battles is just something that you pick and choose with wisely. Like, you got to always pick, like, that banger, you know? So it's like, 
I love battles. I think that there should be more unisex battles. I don't think that all female battles is like, I think it's great to see it, but I think it, we have enough stuff that pits us against each other in the culture. I think, mm -hmm. I think it should be inclusive, not exclusive, right? So inclusive means we do things with men and women together. Exclusive mm -hmm. means you're only doing exclusive women stuff, which I think we, we went through a point in the women's culture where we had nothing. Now they started including us in it, right? And doing exclusive stuff for women, right? Your own stuff. Mm -hmm. But now we're at a point where everything should be merged and inclusive. So we right. shouldn't be singling out women's products, singling out women's battles, singling out. So like this whole women's, women's, women's thing, not my cup of tea. I, I think what it is, is that a lot of women are afraid to come forward and battle against the men. Like I'll, I'll battle a man any given day of the week. I don't have a problem with it. But some of the other women in the culture, like if they see that they're going up against a man, then they don't want to do it. They rather go against another female. And I think it might be because some of the women, like, I, like I'm a size five, size five and a half wide. And I recently battled on who has the heat with uh 410 B more. And you know, his, his, he's, able to get shoes that I can't and his, level, awesome his shoes is not the same quality that I get on a GS shoe. So I think that might be where, where they get a little scared when it comes to, or apprehensive, should I say, when it comes to battling the men like me, I don't care. I'm going to just show my shoes because I love the fun of the culture money involved or not. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't think that men are, I don't think they're scared per se. I don't want to say that they're scared. I just think like when it comes up to certain women, like they don't want to get smoked by a female. Right. So it's like, it's like, you don't want to be that dude to be known to smoke by a female. But I did, uh, win in a battle against a male. And he was like, if I was going to lose to anybody, it is it, 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 you, I'm all right with it because I, I, and he was just like, ah, and I'm like, yo, your, your shit was fire, but I came like a ringer. I came through. I know what I was dealing with. So it was like, you know, it, it's strategic, you know, and but shout out to the women who could come through strategic. You know what I'm saying? It's like right. a, it's a talent to be able to like say, hmm, this right. one, that one, this one is going to smoke somebody, you right. know, because I've seen people to show up to battles with. I've seen people show out to, to battles with some regular GS 14s and some shit that you're just like, oh, those are cute. Oh, right. oh those, oh, those. And are that cute. was, and that was my thing. I was saying like, I like, I know if I had offended people, but like before, back when I first started watching who has the heat, I'm just like, yo, you can't, you can't enter a battle with like regular shit. Like you can, but for me, when I think about a battle, is like you know your collection is you know you're ready for anything that's thrown at you and I, if you are a person who just has grs i don't know that you can compete in every but that's, aspect but that's another thing too right it's the like, audience that's mm -hmm. another thing too it's just like all right when you're actually doing a battle right what are the categories the tiers or the layers right because i'm not gonna sit here and battle next to one of my one of my youngins who, whose favorite pair of sneakers is like a Jubilee who just got into this. <laughs> no, right. and, and no shade to no, them. Because, no, no shade, but it's just because, funny. you like, know what? I when, I, when I think about the culture, right, and I think about, like, people who gatekeep, people who really, like, who really, like, be like, yo, we're going to criticize everything the new generation has. Or when I look at that, and it's like, I'm not even all right, touch that one. <laughs> we're, the, we're the super seniors, right? So... We're the super seniors in the culture. And then you got your freshmen, right? Yeah. But if you don't take the freshmen under the wing, then then they just exactly. gonna be loose cannons out there, right? And they never gonna learn. And then we're gonna continue to complain about the culture going to shit because we didn't take the responsibility of teaching the youngins, which right. I take that very seriously. I take it to heart. I teach all my ladies, you know, what it is, what time it is in the sneaker culture. Don't play yourself. You know what I'm saying? Collect your shit and keep it flowing right. and now that we are in a different landscape it's just like like yeah. things are changing we're in a i don't know if you guys feel it do you feel it now the transition that we're in like online do you feel an online transition of community culture people you know you see a lot of new faces you see a lot of new mm -hmm. things being done we're yeah. in a very transitional time in the sneaker culture you know because i also i work behind the scenes and then i'm also in the community so behind the scenes you know there's new thought going into campaigns commercials product mm -hmm. 
There's mm-hmm. new ideas. There's new brands that are coming to the forefront. Look how far New Balance has come. Yo. You know, from being all the way in the back New Balance to being is taking off. Industry, right? right, taking off. So it's like there's so many different moving pieces. And what was once lame is now hot. Mm-hmm. And what was and look at where Asics is. And Asics, right. Ronnie had Asics jumping. And Asics right now is like, Meow. so it's mm-hmm. like it's not one of the more popular pieces in the culture. Right. So it's like which is surprising. So it's like, we're going through a lot of change. So, you know, the one thing is, is like men are allies and they should be pushing the message and the voice for women forward. Um, But I don't think it should be by creating exclusive spaces for women because we need to be inclusive, you know, and and the younger generation is like freshmen, right? When they come into school, they don't automatically start hollering at the boys. They grew up with the girls and they kind of, they do their thing. But I think it's more of we have to embrace the youngins, teach them a little, bring them in so that, number one, they're not fighting at sneaker con. Number two, they're not uh, engaging exclusively with just women. You know, they get to communicate with men and we get to all sit at the table and kind of just uh, be one and be united. So I think we have a little bit of work to to come through, but it's a transitional time right now. Right. Um yeah, I mean, we were we were like kind of when we had uh you know the guys on uh, Dre Jungles and Young Tay, we had them on talking about kind of like the new class, like old school, new school. And I do feel like a lot of the older heads are stuck in their ways. I mean, how you said it was perfect. It seemed like when I said it, it became a whole thing. But that's all I was saying. Like you know, gatekeeping is not going to be the way. Like, how can you expect somebody to the you know not be this newbie without you know, embracing them and taking a, under your wing? If you're gonna complain about a newbie without being a mentor first. That's a problem because, you know, I mentor, I mean, I, was a I, mentor, I mentor so many young women. I just shot a whole campaign, a whole project with a young girl, um, 21 years old. She just got into this like two or three years ago. Am I going to sit here and be like, ah, you got like 40 pairs of sneakers. I had that when I was a nine. No, I'm not going to sit there and belittle somebody's ambition and their passion and and, you know we all started somewhere you know what i'm saying it's like we all started somewhere but you know me right my father loved sneakers he loved fashion he was a fly guy in brooklyn you know like that was him i learned this from from my parents you know so it's like they love that fly shit and i learned this from them so it's like if i didn't learn it from them who would i have picked this up from right you know So it's like, who are these kids picking shit up from? And to be quite honest, I think we have a responsibility. You Mm -hmm. know, we make shit look real fly online. You know, you take your, Danny come out with her Vashti's, making everybody hella crazy with her Vashti's, you know? Everybody comes out with these amazing sneakers. What do you think that does for the 13-year-old kid? What do you think it does to the 14-year-old kid? If they be like, damn, when I get older, I, you know, I want those. Or when I get some money or I idolize those or, you know, uh, even the other way, I'm a steal for those, you know? It's like, what are we <clears throat> saying to the world, right? So it's like, think of all of us together, right? There's like, I don't know, 500, 600 of us, right? That he- heavy on the kicks game, right? That we're out there in the visible world. All of us together look like this majestic piece to all these people underneath us who don't collect at a rate as we do. So we have a responsibility, number one, not to educate, but also, you know, my DM is always open for people to ask me to authenticate, ask me a question, communicate with me, because I feel like that's the way to communicate with this generation. Look at this young girl. Um. Shout out, her name is Arrogant Cass on, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. 16 years old. She does her own um, trade show in Ohio. Mm-hmm. She's a oh, wow. female, 16 years old. She rents a space, puts tables, all about the sneaker culture. Her passion is there. I listen to her, I see her, and it's like, if I was 16 years old doing this and I could start all over, I'd be six times the beast that I am now, 10 times the beast that I am now, because I would have came up in building, not right. only on the community side, but also on the business side. So it's like, shout out to these kids that are out there, like yeah. doing way more than what we did at 16. Right. In the customized, like I see it even in the custom world. I'm like, yo, these kids are starting younger and younger. Like, uh, what was it Bison Customs? He was like, in high school doing stuff for celebrities like he goes crazy like 
Like it's just it's just it's just crazy the level that these kids or I guess the the access they have, you know, or the things that you know we didn't know then that they Yo, know now and they're taking I'm advantage all of for, it. I'm all for the next generation of sneakerheads coming up right now. Like I'm all for them. They're gonna be the the ones to change the whole game. They're the ones that want to see strategy built into the brands. They want to see the context of the brands. They want to see not only do they want a woman sneaker, they want the sneaker designed by a woman marketed by a woman, released by women. Like, it, they're changing the face of the world, and that's going to be beautiful to see in sneakers. I wrote about this in, in Ad Week. I wrote an article for Ad Week, and this was something that we touched on. Like, this generation is changing the business side of things. It ain't us, and it ain't the generation under us. Generation Z. You know, they're considering not um, having men's and women's sections anymore. Right. Right? They would do sections by kind of like styles, right? And just get away with men and women. That was the segregation that was created in society. It was ne never needed, right? So right. the gender was never needed. We never needed to identify by men and women. That was something that the government wanted us to identify as, right? These kids are non-binary. They are they. They are not he or she anymore. So it's like they are changing the way retailers speak to them. And that's why you're seeing a lot of stuff that's like either gender neutral, gender right. fluid. Yeah, because... That messed me up. I was on Old Navy the other day and I'm like, yeah, where are all the clothes? And I'm like, oh, in the gender neutral section here, I guess. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, so but, it's it's very different, but... But to be fair, uh, a female's foot and a male foot isn't the same. So how can you totally do away with a male or a female shoe? Do they design shoes for women now? Like real talk? No, they no, give they us colorways. Unless they do a unless they do a, a woman exclusive release because I know And like, the women's I, exclusive release are not women's models. They're not women's silhouettes. They're still a men's sneaker. They're, they're a men's very, sneaker, but they're, they're different. They're cut different. No. My women's sneakers are cut different than my men's sneakers. So mm -hmm. they want you to think that they have a different mold. There if you're talking about a Jordan or a Nike. There is no different mold unless the sneaker box itself. Like, for example, SB, right? You got Nike SB and then you got Nike SB CMFT, right? You got the comfort ones, right? Mm -hmm. The only difference is, is, is the comfort ones are the comfort ones are a different make, right? But when it's a Jordan 3 women and a Jordan 3 men, that Jordan 3 women is still a male designed sneaker. There is no technology change for the women. It's still, they're all <laughs> male designed yeah. sneakers. I will the, say my, my the women cut, The feel cut different. doesn't mean that they made the sneaker for a woman. Right. So what, what so what, why is the cut different? Who, who is what, the yeah, cut what is it? What are they changing that makes it more? This is a woman's design sneaker. What that means is that this sneaker was designed and performance tested by women, right? When you have, this is a man's sneaker in a woman's colorway cut for a woman, not performance tested by women. It's still a man's sneaker. This was designed for the woman's gait, walk, jump, height, width, foot, everything. This was the still designed for the men. Just right. changed our colors. So it's so just. What cut is that on the shoe? Because there is a difference in the way that it wears. It feels different. All it is is just a narrowing of the actual for women and narrowing of your ankle. Because a men's ankle, uh, when you you know have a, a men's sneaker, your ankle circumference, these are like nine, I think, nine to ten inches. And then on the woman's one, it's like six to eight, something like that for the circumference, right? The rim of the sneaker. So they do change a few things, but does that mean that it's a true sneaker that was made right a Reebok freestyle high made for women right that was an aerobic sneaker that was tried and trust tried and tested for women so right. and I think that's something that this generation they be they be like we want more women's sneakers we want more women's sneakers I'm like I haven't seen one come through yet like you want more we haven't had one because one has not been presented a true one that's made for women so right. it's like what is going to enhance the performance like for the WNBA players right sneakers made for women good sneakers can enhance the game right just like good sneakers for men can enhance enhance the men yep. game yeah then why do they make women's shoes all the way to 14 and a half is it a woman's shoe or was it a male silhouette that they call women's colorway that's yeah. the question right so it's like 
the question is, and it's like extended sizes, right? Yeah. Extended sizes on GS. It's still a GS sneaker, right? Right. So, and I don't think the audience understands what I'm saying. So yeah, I was just gonna say because NBS is talking. She's saying that the shoe is a male silhouette they marketed do. towards women, and it's just right. narrow just in certain areas. That's all she's saying. Yeah. Right. So, but then you have sneakers like this is a Jordan, right? So this is a Jordan. It's a woman's Air Latitude Seven Twenty, right? So this is a sneaker that Jordan introduced just for women, right? Oh. These are not men's sizes. They never made them for men. Right now, the technology of this sneaker is the Air Max Seven Twenty Bubble, right? Right. Then you see they took inspiration from the eight. From the eight. The, right. You see the neck, Harachi oh, raids. So you see, they got inspirations everywhere to have a sneaker that's like super functional, right? Really holds the ankle, really has stability across it, really has bounce for game, right? Then this is the only Jordan ever to have a Swarovski anything, Swarovski right. hand tag. The whole interior of the sneaker is Swarovski. Right. Crazy. So this is a woman's sneaker that is made just for women, meaning... Wow. That this design was for a woman, right? So from from woman from beginning to end. Right. Bye. So when you looked at this sneaker, when they decided when they designed it, they said, Hey, you know what? We are going to give them something for their walk, for their gait, for their stretch, right? Something for their game, right? Something for their ankles, something that's supportive, right? Something that supports a way a woman walks. But when you have these male sneakers, right, in women's colorways. So I'm going to pull these babies out again. So when you have this sneaker, right, made for a woman, right, this is a Jordan 3. Man. When they made the Jordan 3, it was made for the way men walk, the way men jump, the way men play. More importantly, this was for Michael Jordan's foot. Right. So this sneaker, all Jordans um, that he played in, actually, and even till date, still has a shape that is... Jordan was very pigeon-toed, so that's why a lot of Jordans really, like, curve in heavy. And right. he also had a very narrow foot. You know how many people be like, oh, my pinky toes hurt in those. Those Jordans don't fit me. My pinky toes hurt. <laughs> you know? You got All pinky day. toe problems, girl? I feel you in the pinky toe. So it's like, you know, a lot of people say that because they're not made for our women's self. Or how many women have burns on their ankles, right? On the back or the, the side. The uh, from, from wearing the wrong socks <laughs> with a sneaker that's made for a men's a male's ankle and then where the sneaker stops on us is different than where it stops on men so it's like i can wear this sneaker and homeboy who's a size Jixi, eight. can you hold both of the shoes you were just showing because i can already tell with the three and the, the other jordan you were holding the the jordan for women is way narrower like if you show the bottom mad dog hair <laughs> so you can oh you can see how it's cut in mm -hmm. yeah so you can already see, right? So you can see the center gets narrower too for us, right? So it's like, it's a big difference in the actual sneaker, but the same size. So it's like, it's very interesting how you have, you know, how you have these sneakers that are just completely two different sneakers, but it's the marketing behind it, right? Right. They're going to tell you new women's exclusive but is it really a women's exclusive right nope so when you have women's yeah. exclusives is there such a thing these days men's and women's this is women's right made for a woman yep right so this is to answer that question this is made for a woman right right so when we say everything is unisex that's great right for it to be unisex who was the intended design for? Because we don't jump the same. We don't play ball the same. We right. don't. That's like a sneaker for Zion Williams going on a swing cash. Right. It ain't going to work. That sneaker's going to weigh her down because he needs a big sneaker. He needs a big boy material that's going to hold his foot. <laughs> so it's, right. So it's like, that's the simplest way to explain it. It's like women have different needs. And, you know, we need them fulfilled in more ways than one shoe. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's another show. It's a whole nother show. Yeah, I think Jixie's point too is that it's very rare to see a shoe that's made and designed specifically for a woman's foot. 
Right. Like right. the first women's design sneaker was the air. Um, it was the Reebok Freestyle High, right? Yeah. So the fifty four elevens. That's yep. the first sneaker in history that they said, "Hey, we're we're girls. gonna make a sneaker just for women," meaning that it was meant for what women do in sneakers. So I took these out at the request of Miss Yo, Wood. I love those forever. So. Colette Forever, shout out. Mafioso. So, this sneaker was made for women to do aerobics. <laughs> this sneaker was meant for the craze in the 80s, which was the, the craze that the you needed to. Socks. So, you needed to strap your ankles, right? So, you needed real ankle support to do the all the, the moves, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you got to think, like, think of flash dance. Yeah. What up, That's my whole childhood. My grandma only wore a white so, pair, all white pair. Mine yeah. too. She loved these to go to work. So, it's like, this became a very multifaceted sneaker, but somebody said those Air Max with crystals are women's. They are a men's design that are made in a women's color. Yep. For, for uh, you for could women. be dazzle anything in color, the wouldn't you? Yeah. Right. So <laughs> this sneaker was the only one that was made for truly, like at the time, for women. We have a lot more now. It's not to say we don't like. When you talk about the Nike, like when you're talking about. Um, when you're talking about like Nike, right? Mm -hmm. Nike running really focuses on women, but to us, that's not hype. So when you're talking about like a Pegasus, mm -hmm. Pegasus is a superior sneaker. That's a really great sneaker in terms of technology. What there's two different cultures out there, right? You got the people that really fuck with hype and what's popular, and you got people that really fuck with technology and design, right? So you got people that really like love them some Pegasus, they love them some Deodoras, like they love Brooks, they love all uh, all birds, they love Clearwater, they like all, Clearweather, they like all these brands, they, Ho Hoka, they like these brands, Mizuno, they you're like, huh, what? Uh, I don't really rock that, but that's the whole culture of people who collect those pieces too. So, that's like, I really love Deodora and 9000s, those go on, oh, I'm back. Yeah. Those shout go out to, on. Shout my... out to Matt for the win for bringing the adorers back to the forefront for the people. <laughs> those go on my. Those go on my top top. So, um, I got these. Bay got these for me for. I think it was like Christmas or something. So these are the twenty four Kaladis collaboration. Mm. Oh, is that velvet? Mm. What is that velvet? Look at that. that velvet? It's velvet with three M lace. That's so beautiful. it's a, it's a lace that's a uh, satin lace that's three M. Um, and I like the hardware on it. Oh, where is it? So I really like like all the hardware on it. It's like super mm -hmm. fly. But the leather on these, like the leather on these is stupid. But you know, these are men's and then it got of course gum bottom makes everything better. Everything oh, better. Yeah. Um, it comes in like the most amazing velvet. Mm. That's bad. This is what I mean about other brands like uh, and the box and all of the these. Box the box is like a lace. Extras. It's like a black camel lace. It's beautiful too. So it's like I probably retailed for like two hundred, Jixi. I think this one was like two twenty five, if I'm not mistaken, mm. or two fifty. You got all that extra on there. Right. Yeah, and these were like made in Italy, so it like truly says where it was. I haven't even worn these yet because these are winter color and a winter material, so I'll definitely never wear these in the summer. Yeah. So, but these Jixi's are adamant about her seasonal shoes. I am adamant. I need breathable, <laughs> breathable, breathable. So, but anyway, these go away, but. These, the color is beautiful. I think just uh, so much is beautiful about these. But this is something that they sold out, but nobody gave a fuck about them. Everybody was just like, who, what is that? Who is that? You know, we don't wear that. I feel like it's, I, a, it's like a select underground of people who fuck with like the Adora, Sakonis, like all that, that type of stuff. Yeah. It's, shout out to the Adora official. Like, uh, uh those Shreks. Yo, I love those Shreks. OG. And, uh, the panda, the um, the pandas. I I almost beat. I was second place in a battle with those pandas. Um, they're just beautiful to look at, like in person. But Deodora N nine thousand, super comfortable. I mean, one of the most comfortable sneakers I own. But always the quality that goes into them, yeah. like, is always amazing. Like that's why the Raekwons are only built for Cuban links, and um, I took out another pair too. Like. I just all fuck with other, all those other brands. Always give you a, a better presentation, a better better quality shoe than you'll ever get with Jordan Brand. Yeah, like um, so I, I took out my Raekwon, so signed by Raekwon. Yep, 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 yep. So, 
I know, but like, yo, when you look at this, like, what goes into these sneakers, right? So these are the only built for, this is the purple tapes. Mm -hmm. So you have, of course, the Raekwon parental advisory. Then you got the whole track list in the sole. So yes. you have, this is side two, right? So it says two on the back. And then the other sneaker says one. Mm -hmm. So it's just like the ideas. And then it has the 1995 for the year it came out. Then it's like purple, like it, like the tape. And then for the release, they actually had a concert. So I still have like the ticket for the concert <laughs> to watch, you know, Raekwon and then the extra laces, like how they come. Nice. Then it came with a poster that I turned into my... um my message board so i have a message board that is uh raekwon um it's the same it's the poster as this signed okay so that's my it's my message board in my office so you know it's just like what comes with it and just the quality yep. of this sneaker you know the quality of this sneaker and i like all the bait collabs on the n9000s so like yep. the transformer packs Yo, you know all the cartoons that came out mm -hmm. like it's just amazing so to me, this is like an amazing runner. Um, I love N9000. I also like S8000s a lot too. But a lot of people don't get into them because they, they don't see it, so they don't know about it. So I'm hoping, right. you know, by showing some different brands, showing some different models, you know, people get into something besides what you see and, and what you well, think is so high. I just picked up these joints, the uh, Bride of Frankenstein, the Socrates, and yeah. the Frankenstein. Like these are so clean. Like the suede is super nice. Like, these were a hundred bucks. I remember like, we I mean, used just... to call those so cornies. <laughs> right, but bro, these are like yo, know, these are fire. You know, I just recently started calling them Saucony like three or four years ago. I think I, to me, because I grew up in in Bushwick, is that uh, it was a very heavily populated Puerto Rican community. Yes. We've always been into sneakers in our community. But when we speak about them, we always spoke about them in our dialect. So, um, now I can't say it the old way. So, Sakani, Sokoni, Sokoni. Yeah. So, I used to say Sokoni my whole life until I I worked with Sakani. I did a project with them and it was Sakani. And I'm like, oh my God, it was so corny <laughs> for so long. <laughs> Just like Elise, right? I yep. grew up my whole life calling well, it Elise. Elise because so it's not Elise? <laughs> we no. heavy, we heavy with the E's, you know? So it was like, yo, I need a pair of Elise's. And it's like, no, it's Elise. So yeah, cultural, cultural, those things. <laughs> <laughs> Those things transcend, you know? So, and I learned that from my parents. So imagine my parents learned that they're Saucony and Elise when I did. So, you know, yeah, should be like that. So I also got these um, dope ass Reebok. So Reebok had a program called First Pitch. Mm -hmm. So basically they pitched an idea. And if you liked it, you bought into the idea, right? Okay. So you bought it. And if they actually did it, you would get the sneaker. So these are limited edition. Only 500 pairs are made of each of the sneaker. Nice. So these are the tennis ball club C's. What I love about these, why I fangirl for them, is because they have the old Reebok tennis logo on them. This is a vintage logo that they used to use on their tennis products. Mm -hmm. And the whole point was to bring this logo back onto the sneaker, which is why they made it. And then they used the tennis ball as an accent. Nice. So I truly love that about these. And I love Club C's. Yeah. You know, you can Club see the suede on it. Um, They're super right. comfortable. Like, right. this that, is that, like... Uh, that Jordan 3 vibe. <laughs> this is like... Yeah, this is amazing. So it's like, you know, and I'm eclectic. So it's like, I get a little bit of what I like that nobody fucks with. I get a little bit of hype I like. Like, I just... I be back and forth with it. Yeah. Like, you know, I was shown word... How much like I yeah, I, I, need, I need those these. so and I didn't realize like, how limited those were. Yeah, I knew they I was gonna go. I like I just love anything love like with some accessories. Yo, I love I like I'm, I'm upset, yo for real, I'm obsessed with one Lowe's like now. I love the upholstery on them. I think the upholstery is amazing. Like it's just something that I really love. I love one Lowe's. Um <laughs> one Lowe's is just like Perm. one Lowe's is just like um 
I remember a lot of people talking shit about One Lows, talk about One Lows. As, you know, there was a lot of memes out there. There was a right. lot of memes out there. A lot of people well, now you get past because in the, the middle of the new attack now. And just like low, uh, two lows, right? Two lows. I love me some two lows. I love 14 lows. I love, I just like lows. Five lows. Oh, it's funny you're talking about those two lows. I think I was on that, um, um, that, what is it? The clubhouse where you were talking about it. <laughs> and then you're talking about how you get so much hate for them. <laughs> no, because you know what? They point up, right? So the yeah. two lows, right? The front of it points up. So my friend calls them in Spanish, my shoes, my zapatos. She'd be like, yo, you gonna wear those sneakers that look like little zapatos? And I'm like, no, <laughs> they're two lows and they look fire. And she's like, no, they look like little shoes. Like you're gonna go out there um, tap dancing. So she stay making, she stay killing my two lows. So yeah. I went, so she's always ragging two's my two lows. Two's getting no love in general, though. Yeah, word. And that's my favorite. Out of all Jordan's think, twos are my favorite. I think you're the only one buying all the two lows. <laughs> Yo, all of them. Chicago's, all of them. So when, when, when it's time, when it's, when, and, and look, and now Virgil is doing a collaboration where he's doing a two low, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, oh, now because Virgil Off White's gonna come out with a too low, y'all yeah, gonna course. be all on gonna be it. And then, and then that's well, when Jixi, that's when people will be I'll, like, I'll oh, be Jixi. Going, I'll be going for Jixi size because that's I don't what they're know. gonna be like. Look, that's when they're gonna be like, Jixi's hot. She got all the old two lows. No, y'all was just ragging me and dragging me <laughs> for it. Mm -mm. Not only do not only do I have one lows, I have one low fats. Mm. That's a whole different Jordan one low. It's the one low fat. And if y'all do your homework, there's some very iconic one low fats out there. So there's only the like 50 made. It, that will fall on my head and kill me. Like y'all will have me just like, <laughs> I'll be the first one to pass out on live TV or, or live YouTube off a sneaker. <laughs> but I pulled them out. You know what it is? I, I hate to pull out the same sneakers. Right. Like people be so excited to see certain sneakers. I hate to pull out the same sneakers. Right. There's no point for me. But y'all got a one low right here. <laughs> respect the one low and now respect the twos and all the other lows that's out there. <laughs> But they, I like all the other hype. Like I got, the, I caught the J Balvin's. I got the Union Fours and the Nor and the and the Guava. You know, I went in last year, but those ain't the sneakers that's gonna get any love in the next four or five years because it's just it's too many. You know, I just got the the Khalifas as well, and I bought the jacket for it. I'm not wearing that this year because it's too hot. You know, I need to wear the coat next year and things like that. So it's like I'll be ready for all this stuff. We'll get worn next year because. What I have deteriorating in my face needs to get worn first. Right. <laughs> it's a sad, like, sneaker collecting is not glamorous when your sneaker um, collection starts deteriorating on you. Like, that's when you hit a point where you love it, and I'm always going to love it, and I'm always going to be hyped to, to get the next pair, and, and I don't see me stopping. But the pain of knowing, like, a lot of money going down the drain because you just can't salvage some of these. Like you just can't do it. So it's like when you see a hundred pairs go down, when you see 200 pairs go down, when you see something that's like, damn, this was that shit. And now it's no longer is, you know, is it makes you think a little bit about what you buy. So right now, like I tell people, forgive me for not being hype about GRs, but they're not going to last in what I got. I need to pull quality because that's the only thing that's the same way I did 10 years ago, where now those are the same sneakers I can still wear. Now I got to buy sneakers that's going to go the distance because right. if now we ain't going to be able to wear them. So to have 100 pairs of ones, they, they ain't going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I got rid of a lot of pairs of ones that... um were not even that old, but that they couldn't continue no more. So it was like, you know, keep going. Just right. keep going. That's what we, I do. We need to pull together the Jixi classes, like, because, like, I don't even think people really know quality. Like, just, yeah, just throw that in people's face. Why not? Like, people don't even really know quality. Because, you know, like, the definition of quality to people now is shattered backwards or whatever. Mm. But that that's yeah. the shoe that everybody holds the torch to when it comes to comparing and and uh, Nike doesn't even use like what, the hundred percent. No, yeah, the, like, the shadow uh, leather. The they, board ones. They might use like three percent leather, and the rest of it is <laughs> synthetic. Mm -hmm. Let me see. My favorite one. What's my favorite one? 
Nah, that's a good question. I don't even know what my favorite one is. I love those Dave Whites, man, just because it's yeah. Just I love it's Dave Whites Super. too. Dave Whites are dope. Exactly, Lashawn. Lashawn, <laughs> why she wear the, the hell out of her shoes? Exactly. So I, I wear my shoes well because yeah. we've been locked down. I haven't really worn them, but at my job, I like we can wear sneakers. So every day I would come in. I mean. A different pair of I got. I mean, I only got what's around me. But you're talking about I got like old sneakers, like old. You know what I'm saying? Don't bring, like, don't bring the foam gang out. T three. <laughs> I'm foam gang. I'm the only person that's still foam gang. So, you know, I can't do it, and I'd be like, I'm like, yo, Jixi, I fuck with Jixi. I fuck with all the sneakers. You know what I'm saying? I was saying? like, bro, I, like, I don't got, I don't got time I, to break in those shoes. Those shoes you gotta break in. <laughs> and I just don't got the time. Well, like. I, yeah, I, know. My I walk heavy and I walk sloppy and I'm side to side with it. I'm the friend that you walk down the street with and we'd be down in the street because I'm I'm like pushing you because I'm that girl that walks on top of you because I walk so like ferociously. So it got to be sneakers that have like, first of all, I love ball sneakers. I'm a 90s like sneaker lover. That's my favorite era in sneakers. So it's like, I love me some ball sneakers. Like nowadays, basketball sneakers are runners. So I'm not really mm-hmm. into it. I got some PGs and I got some Kyries and it's like eh, MBS. Don't do that. Yes, yo, that pair. Oh. Yeah. So it's like you know I got some that's that's there, but you know I took out some some pieces. You know I got like mm-hmm. you know, basketball kicks, so you know I got some some something oil, like- something light, think, you know. I think the only reason <laughs> why I don't have any foams is because I'm a I'm grade school and that grade school foam is just not attractive. That shit looks weird as hell. I like it better than the men's mm, foam in my Peter. opinion. But I only have two pairs. I'd rather have the men's toe box. That grade school toe box looks crazy. My favorite <laughs> pair of foams ever is a dark army. So like dark armies are my like hearts of foams. And it's like it, I don't know why I just love me a dark army is like is mean and it's my color green and it's a mean sneaker so you know foams is foams is the shit but for real know. um LaShawn said the the foams will last forever yep they'll be here you can go to war and goddamn things mm-hmm. oh it's my- Memorial Day weekend the only other person I ever see post those are Jody. And this is just this is this is just what I got available for y'all. This is this is just her everyday uh uh, little meters, you know. We won't even get into her snacks and all of that. No, this is this is just like so what this is is like I got a few fits out, so I took out the fits and then I'll go look for the sneakers and then I put them in here because I know like within the month or t- you know, a couple of weeks I'm gonna wear those fits. So I go looking for the sneakers. So this I only use to rotate immediate wear. And then cause if not, then you're gonna be playing sneaker Tetris with your boxes every day and you're like doo, 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 Yeah, doo, I've doo, I've raised avalanche. a couple of my 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 box top lids because I, I pulled the shoe out and I ripped some of the lids. My dog mm-hmm. is like, he knows what a sneaker avalanche is because <laughs> they happen so frequently. So he, he's so smart. He looks up at the top one and he starts running from it. <laughs> he knows like, oh, that shit is coming down. Like we, we've gone through it. So it's like today I had some shit fall and it's like, that's how I pick what sneakers is coming out today. So I'll do that. But I'm really just trying to Dixie, get through. NBS wants to know if you wear your shoes with the tag on it still. Some of them I do. And you know why? Because I'd be so ready to throw them on and go that I'd be forgetting and I got to tuck them in. And then I'd be like the herb tucking it in. But if I could remember to snip it, I'd be in the street asking people all the time, give me a nail clipper, give me something to, to snip it. But um, I don't do it on purpose. I just be running out. Or I have this thing now after COVID, I didn't wear enough sneakers. So now I'm wearing one of ones, right? So the other day I wore a pink Don C and I wore a beach Don C, right? So I wore the Arctic orange and I wore the beige one. Because mm-hmm. I had a pink and beige dress on. It was so cute. So I put on both and I was like, yo, one of the the beach, I didn't even open it up. It was still factory laced. It was so tight. I was like, oh my God, I'm out the door. I'm like, I gotta go I have a meeting. <laughs> so finally, when I get to the meeting, the whole time I'm at the meeting and the, I'm under the table unlacing them and they're like are you unlacing your sneakers i'm like i'm so sorry i'm listening i just 
needed to. No. <laughs> my sneakers like are choking my circulation. I'm sorry. It's funny that you say that because, you know, Jordan 1s don't come laced. So whenever I would get a new Jordan 1 when we were in the office working, um, I would, I would leave for work with my shoes not even laced. I would just put them on, unlace, tuck my laces, and when I get to, to work, I would have somebody at my job lace them for me. Yo, my, <laughs> my black toes, I literally, no, literally, they're laced only three times. Why? Because I was too lazy to lace them, and I wore them like that, and they wind up staying like that. So I just, or I uh, have the yin and yangs. I literally laced it once. I did the, the bottom went across and just tied it on the top because I was just, <laughs> I'm always on the run, you know, I, I work hard. So it's like my, my saying and my tagline is these sneakers don't buy themselves. Right. So because they don't buy themselves, mm -hmm. I'm always ripping and running in them. But I do have like, especially now, let's talk about the boom of, of tags, right? So StockX has tags, Fly Club has hey. tags, eBay Why? has tags, everybody's, Why? everybody um i order from um uh a store and they have their own tags now and i'm like oh shit so y'all just all out here with your own tags because everybody wants to wear them uh, on the shoe why not only that but everybody it's not even that they want to wear them everybody wants to solidify that this shit is authentic yep and I don't trust Tags nobody. Might not even be I, authentic. I authenticate myself. How about that? There'd be shoes that you tell me is authentic, and I'd be like, hell no, they is not. So it's like, you know, and I had a big fight with StockX about a sneaker, authenticating a sneaker, who I found recently taking a good amount of time to authenticate was Flight Club. Because Flight Club straight up told me, look, we got a pair of sneakers, but they missing something. So I don't even know. And I'm like, you know what? I respect it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to respect you, Flight Club, because y'all been around a long time. But really? it's like, it? all Maybe right, so y'all all, all want to authenticate. Okay, so you want to guarantee me that my shit is legit. I'll take it. But now I get these heavy-ass, wired, freaking metal tags on my sneakers. And it's like, I right, if I want to just rip, I, you coming with me. But I, I try not to leave them on. No. Or I tuck them in. I t I'll tuck them in. But if you catch them coming out, what can I do? I'm out here trying to live, you know, trying to eat. Right. right. <laughs> Where do you want to do the um artist spotlight? Cause I you got oh, you got sorry. it on. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Artist oh, yeah. spotlight. Shout out to the bro. Kick the habit. You know what I'm saying? He's got his loyal habits line out. Yeah. Uh, follow the page on IG loyal habits. He's got yeah. a couple of hoodies. He's got this. Show one. the 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 sleeve. Oh, Ooh. the sleeve. Yeah. Like this is quality. Like this is stitched. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. This is stitch. This is this is quality. Like the hood fits proper. It's not, you know, it's not one of these hoods. Like, it's comfy, <laughs> you know, with shoelaces with the metal no. tips. Like this is quality. It's not expensive. I, I can't I can't remember how much they are. Hella, do you know? I don't remember. He just told me and I just shoot him the money. Um, like no kicks quality because I 60 50? or 65. 60? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. 65. He's got a he's got this hoodie, he's got a, a black hoodie. He's got a uh, white and red socks. He's got black and white socks. He's got a hat. So, you know, he's going to be coming with more stuff. Like, he's been waiting to break the stuff out. I've been on him for, like, a year. Like, bro, when I'm going to get some more hoodies. Mm -hmm. And I got my hoodie. Also, the hat by the bro, Scooter Love. You know what I mean? Shout out to him. He just, you know, uh, lost his parents. So, salute to the bro. Uh, but, you know, he's got these crazy hats. Act bad. Act bad, you know what I'm saying? He's got the little pins. You can hit him up on the uh, IG. Yeah, I support. I try to support everybody. You now I'm saying AMC treating me right, so I'm out here trying to spend on the independence. I think the last thing we had was uh, the I Love Swoosh. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if anybody you did, you knew you knew him, right? Uh, I assume. You had yeah. To. Rest in peace, Marco. Man, I I yeah. was um. I haven't been vocal about it because I feel like whenever we lose someone in the sneaker community, that's when everybody wants to come out and say they know somebody or that they love somebody. And I feel like that's kind of like exploiting um, somebody in, in their passing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had to intake that and, and I'm still, I think I'm still processing it to be quite honest. Like I think just, to know the person that he was and to know who he was. And um, 
I'll share a story because it's hysterical. And um, I think I only told one person. But the way we met was like, I met him so many years ago. I want to say more than 10 years ago because he's his foot locker, like royalty, right? So mm-hmm. met him so long ago. But I forgot his face and I didn't see him for a long time. So I jump on a, on a lineup and um, I'm lining up and he's like, yo, what's up? And I'm like, who are you? Like, I remember your face, but I don't really know you like that. And he's like, nah, we ain't going to do this. He's like, you my dude. And I'm like, no, I, I'm not sure. He's like, yo, don't play with me right now. And he was like, yo, we just spoke like last week. I guess it was like through um, responding to images or something on social media right. at the time. And, and at the time, so a lot of people don't know. When I first started on Instagram, all right, I used to post sneakers like we do on Instagram mm-hmm. on Facebook, Right. Before Instagram. So if you ever go to my Facebook in 2010, 2009, you'll see that I always been posting sneakers like that's always been what I did. Before that, I used to post sneakers on Mi Gente. Like I always just been oh, about gente, yeah, uh-huh. Black Planet. I used to, to put up sneakers on my shit. So a lot of people knew me for sneakers. So he knew me from sneakers because we used to engage through those platforms. But I never hung out with homie. So the day that, that I ran into him, he was like, yo, you gonna sit? And I'm like, we spoke last week, so I was gonna go to my phone to see who it was. <clears throat> At the time, I didn't think that anybody recog- would recognize me because when I started on Instagram, <coughs> I never posted a picture of myself. Right. I used to post pictures of just sneakers right. on foot. That was it, shoe fees, because I always did the shoe fees. So I only did shoe fees. So I didn't think that people would like know my face or anything like that. So boom, he's like, yo, you're going to name until you get my name because I know you know my name. So (laughs) I'm like, all right, what do you want me to do? He's like, start with social media. What's my name on social media? Yo, I named every, like, I was like, I know you. You're one of these niggas with too many sneakers. Like, you got too many sneakers. He's like, no, you're one of them niggas with too many sneakers. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, but who's, so I'm like, all right, Uptown 2K. He's like, no, but that's the homie. I'm like, Jay Collector. He's like, no, yo, I named every sneaker collector page that I know that has mad sneakers. Like, I named people that I knew you weren't, but I was naming him anyway. He's, yo, literally, it was like two hours. He made me name everybody. He was laughing the whole time. He was like, yo, you're a riot. And I'm like, oh, my God, but why don't I know? And then he's like, and I'm like, but what's your real name? He's like, Marco. (laughs) And I'm like... Oh, swoosh. I'm like, I love swoosh. He was like, (laughs) (laughs) after two and a half hours, yo, I'm talking about sweating, just just naming everybody. And he's just laughing because he literally made me go through that. And that day is when I put the face, the social media, the real name, the person all became whole to me. And it was so funny. It was so many years ago, but it was so funny. And I'll never forget, like, um, I forgot what sneaker was it, DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled was on 34th Street. He came on the We The Best bus. Mm -hmm. Yo, and he blocked the whole 34th Street. Everybody was going crazy. And um, we were VIP, so we went to a Foot Locker and we was chilling with everybody. And he was like, because I had like six bags on me. He was like, but what you got though? And I was like, no, don't raid me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it wasn't the callous sneaker, but I had went to do pickups that day to see what I was to get a few pieces. And we stood chilling the whole time and we were bugging out because DJ Khaled was behind the register ringing people up. And he was like, Major Key, you just copped the Major Key. And he was going fucking crazy. <laughs> so it's like all those good memories, you know, and 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 so <laughs> and and can't I'm dying. Um, all those great memories of, of somebody like that. And then just how he went out is something that uh, I'll tell you guys. I like for two days, I was having nightmares, just bug him just because, you know, life is so precious. And it's like when we lose somebody in the sneaker community, it's felt like through that yeah. whole like, <sighs> like waves, you know, you feel it out there. And it's like we've had a lot of loss in, in recent years. And yep. We're aging in the sneaker community. That's another layer to this, right? right? So we're aging together. 
and we're experiencing these illnesses, deaths, family mm-hmm. members, you know, all these things we're going through together. And it's like, you know, being there for one another is, is really important. And it's like, I, I think about this situation and it's just like, whew, we lost, a, we lost somebody who was a, a legend, you know, somebody who was right. legendary in this, like, you know, somebody whose collection was just fire. And it's like, everybody lost somebody, you know, within the last year that, mean something to us but in the sneaker community it's like it's been something that is so profound just because we engage with probably each other more than we do like our families yep you know like we we dm each other we respond to each other's likes similarities you know dislikes you know so we're like so involved with each other that we feel that shit and it's like you know i know that like jen twice you know she she was hurting you know that's a boy and I felt her pain and I couldn't, I, I, I can't look at her, um, her, her stories because she made me cry because of, I know their relationship. And it's just like, you know, it's things like that, that it's just, you feel, you know, you just happen to feel these things. And so it's like, you know, we're, we're a small knit community, even though people say there's millions of us, but I think like all of us that run like in the same circles, you know, we feel that whether we're close to each other or not, but right. You know, rest in peace to him. Um, he left such a huge uh, void and um, it's good like people. Him with a niece, like that's the good like, people. I immediately like, felt for his niece, man. Yeah, life is like, delicate. Life is very delicate, and you know, life is is truly delicate, and it's something that we have to make the best of every day and enjoy each other and focus on the amazingness and the positivity and kind of just move away from all the fuckery because. You know, we only here for a little while. Life is so delicate. And yep. it's like, yo, if we here to fuck with each other, then fuck with each other and let's go. But if right. y'all just wasting time, then it's like, move over already. It's like, right. fuck you sitting here. Fuck you sitting here in the sneaker community. You just want to bash and you just don't want to be a part of. It's like, you know, give opportunity to the people who, who really want to come in and, and be peoples, you know. Right. But shout out to, you know, everybody who's who's dealing with loss right now and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm praying, I'm continuing to pray for his family and for all of our friends in the community who are extremely like hurt by it. And I'm still trying to interpret it myself and make some right. sense of it. Right. Cause it's also like something that I think about too, right? Like, and I'll be honest with you guys, cause I'm, I'm transparent as they come. Uh, his death made me think about like, what do you do with your sneakers after death? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think something that's truly important is like, all right, God bless me, you know, something happens, but like, did I write that into my will? You know, is that something that is known? Like, you know, uh, something happens, just something happened to me, my collection goes to my nephews, you know, that's something that we understand, you know, that's something, that's that's, this their come up, you know what I'm saying? This is their college fund, this is their shit, something happened to me, you know, it's like, this is this is a legacy, it's history, it's our family history, you know? Right. I got some of my mom's sneakers in here. I got sneakers my grandmother bought me, my auntie bought me. Like, these are things that are a part of their heirlooms, you know, right. at this point. So it, it made me think about like, what am I, you know, what do you do with your collection when you're not here anymore? Like, where does it go? Right. You know, does it go to your, your girl, your spouse? You know, what, like, what, what is it, where is it gonna go? So it's like, right. I was thinking about that heavy, like a person like him who has half a mil, maybe. Right. Right. You you got half a mil in, in a collection. You got a million in a collection. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got some and shit. I, and there. I worried I worried about like the vultures, like because you know, I don't know how much his family know about knows about sneakers, but it's like uh, yeah, know, but it, who will, um, who they have accounts enough on the collection. Nah, but they they have enough good people around them to mm. to do the right to thing, know, like. Right. He was a good person. He had good people around him, his friends, his his close confidence. They will always do the right thing because he was a person that was a good person. So, you know, good people, you carry around good people around you. But, yep. you know, I just believe like something like that. I think about my own collection and it's like, you know, where in the world does it have it that that would, you know, it would be passed down to where it needs to go or something like that. And not to say that's the most important thing, but. I just think about it for myself, you know, life is so precious like that. So it's like, what do you do, you know, when you have one of these giant collections and you, you want to 
you wanted to do the right thing for the right people, you know, at the end of the day. So, you know, I, just leave I'm, me with a, my I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a thinker beyond thinking in this space. You know, I, I do a lot with, um, my team that I co-founded, I co-founded inner souls collective. So we do a lot of activations and experiences for different brands and, we had the clubhouse chats for Women's History Month, and that was something that was very cultural. It was pushing culture forward. It was the biggest rooms for women in sneakers and clubhouse. Each of, the, each of the talks were over a 1,000 in attendance. You know, so there's a lot I do behind the scenes uh, for, you know, for this. And it's like, you know, I, I think very, like, I overanalyze from every from a consumer perspective from a brand perspective from a business perspective like i put all the perspectives into everything so when i'm thinking about something like this and loss you know i immediately start thinking about it from all the different layers and levels yep. and and as something that i i was thinking about so he has made me think for the last two you know the last week and a half just so profound about a lot so it's I mean, that would make for that... a good clubhouse also, like, what, like, having people think about that, because, like, aside from that, just, like, your collection, it's, like, life insurance. Like, we see that so many people don't have life insurance because people are, you know... Well, let's up... talk about it. Do you... Uh, is your collection insured? It is. Okay. That's important. And it's, like, insuring your collection and putting insurance to, you know, of course, one of the things is that they're not going to pay you... They're not going to pay you street value for those sneakers they're gonna pay you what you purchased them for or a retail ours, value. ours actually does pay uh well in the case of theft ours pays what it would cost to go and get a new pair got you and some premiums mm -hmm. have those but when they actually like they when they came and they assessed my collection because i have a specific insurance for collectors people that collect stamps cards it's a specific uh kind of um insurance mm -hmm. the insurance some sneakers at the value that they would depending on the depreciation and the years how old they are like let's say a 1920 stamp if it's laminated if it's Ooh. in the right if it's if it is um preserved the right way they'll cover that that card or that stamp right. to the maximum value Right. If these sneakers are not preserved in a certain way, they're not going to cover them to the extent. So it's depending on how they're graded. Right. So it's a very specific measure, but that's the steps that I took to, you know, to protect my assets. But it's something that people should think about. Even if they have 30, 40 sneakers, just throw some insurance on it so that you can, you can give them some value and have some assets in your life because, Look, we buying NFTs on sneakers. They a commodity. Right. It's like your shit. It's like jewelry. It's like anything else that's worth money. It, it becomes a part of your net worth. Yep. Absolutely. And I'm a, you know, I'm a big fan of it. Like, as much as we put into this and we pay into it, you know, we should definitely <laughs> protect it and yep. capitalize when we can off of it because yep. it's like we don't resell, but. If I have a pair of sneakers and it's worth something, you're going to buy it for whatever the fuck it costs out there because I'm going to go buy me four more pairs of sneakers. Right. And that's how this is going to go. Yep. But I can't. Mm. Do you know what I She's mean? She's some jams tonight. Do you have anything else uh, worth? Um, did we go over everything on the list? I think the other, I mean, I know we touched on, uh, I guess, like female sneaker heads a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I wanted to touch on like a little bit, just like, cause you know, you like you're behind the scenes and everything. So I guess like, I know I take notice to like a lot of like, you want to say new females and you know, how quickly certain types of females get, you know, endorsements or, you know, this or that they, you know, hit a hundred K and they might be taking pictures in like bikinis with sneakers, you know, if that's your thing, so be it. But like, you know, we went through the thing with complex, uh, posting the one girl who was making racial comments and like that was an issue so and and they posted like they're posting a certain type of girl right like we're not seeing a diversity it's not diversified as far as sneakerheads because you know we come in all shapes and sizes so like what i mean if you you're looking if you're yeah. looking at for complex to look at culture that's not <laughs> where culture lives right at all i think we if, figured that out a long time ago 
complex to me is sensationalist, right? So let's call complex what it is. They're the star magazine of the sneaker culture, right? They're the Hollywood unlock. Mm. They are the for shock value and factor, right? But they also have their demographic, their core demographic. You know, complex is very popular. Something that we don't look at from this lens is that what's created is not necessarily for New York, Chicago, California. Mm. It's not there. It's for a wider lens that includes Holland, Switzerland, Amsterdam, Europe, you know. And she was, and, and the one Africa, girl who was it was from, uh, look, or she's Africa, from Australia. Germany. So the aesthetic that is popular out there right now, it's a very international aesthetic, right? It, it flows with them more than us, right? So what happens is you got a lot of women right now who are at the forefront in sneakers based on their creative, right? Based on the content that they create and how it circulates. So if I take a picture, and I'm going to use the most um, easy example ever. If I throw these on and I put a white fluffy rug under it and I have my ankle bracelets that say Nike and my sock that matches, right? Mm -hmm. That's an aesthetic that you see on every picture out there, right? Yeah. That's an aesthetic that is selling. That's what young girls are looking at and liking. That's something that, and it's so easy compared to what we do. We are actually more complicated than those things, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens is now you have a culture of, of people who are now paying attention to a particular person or group. And that group is getting shine. And retailers, brands, they all want to be with the most popular. They want to sit with the popular kids. So what happens is they're going to gravitate to that until they see that there's no nothing there. They'll gravitate to it to create content. And as long as that person can create content, then that person's going to be on the forefront. Now, what I have to say is, in that's that's in the business side right and that's mm -hmm. in the that's in the that's somebody who's creating content who's trying to get paid who's right. actually making treating this like a job right people like us you know we're collectors right we're actually out there rocking the sneakers are we flipping that into creative content that is shareable that's the key word right is it shareable it's personal a lot of the time it's personal content that we like Right. But we have to think about it like what is shareable. And I challenge like authentic collectors to make content that is shareable. Right. Because when when it's shareable is when you lift to be at the forefront so that brands can see you and brands can say, hey, you know what? We want to deal with these people. We want to see what they're doing in their sneakers. That's another thing too. What are you doing in your sneakers? So it's like when I look at some of these women that are at the forefront, what are they doing in the sneakers, right? Especially like, me, I sit in a place where I want to push culture forward. I want to leave a legacy. I want to educate young women. That's why we started Inner Souls Collective, right? So that we can do those things. That's why I started Curvy Kicks, to push women of size forward in the community. We don't have body positivity in the community. And we also push it away. A lot of people don't realize body positivity in the sneaker culture, we, we, we don't want that, right? Because what happens is, Bigger women escape to sneakers to avoid fashion, to avoid having to deal with that, right? That reality we didn't want. So we went to sneakers and we felt a whole lot better there. But now what happens when you bring body positivity into our sneaker space? We got to deal with it head on. And that's that's a whole nother beast that I could do. That's a whole nother show between sizing and sneakers and where we're at with that for women but until we are truly equal because until you truly make a 5x a 6x we're not equal as women in the sneaker space on the playing field because if you do a, a lately made collaboration and only go up to a size 2x which that's really an extra large because it's small on the smaller side it's not it's not equal even in the women's world we're still not equal right because you're not making product for all women you know, women over a size, women's 12, have a hard time finding sneakers in stores. Women who are women's size 12, women who are women's size 11, they'll point you right to the men's section with no problem. Girl, you can find sneakers over there. No, I want a woman's size 11 or a woman's size 12. Wow. So, you know, we still, that these are things that I've been on the backside, you know, on the back end just 
pushing for, you know, ha having meetings with brands, creating content for brands. I did the first campaign for Foot Locker for plus size women. So they brought in their first brand and I did that campaign. I've been part of and represented as the first plus size woman, you know, on a Foot Locker, mm -hmm. on some of these apps. So it's like on, on the Nike NBG app, I, I was on the first day, opening day, I was on the app representing plus size women, where before that was something that we, yeah. were, t we were told, you know, we were not the look or we were not yeah. the aesthetic for. So it's like, there's a lot being done, but it's like, what are you doing in your sneakers? And it's like, you know, and so people, you could talk whatever it is, and but what are you contributing to the true change or the true culture or the true community? And there's so much to be done. It's like, there's room for all women, right. you know, and I'm an advocate, like, I, I don't, I don't take nothing too serious in the community. I don't got no black blood with nobody, you know, even though people may think whatever. I don't have no bad blood with nobody. I truly just wish and hope for pushing the culture forward in a way that people can, people can see that women have been here in the building. You know what I'm saying? Like women is this, this was always to me, the future was always, we, women were always here. They just did a good job at telling us we weren't, you know? Right. But women were always in the building when it came up to sneakers, you know? If it wasn't for mamas, half of these boys would never have their first sneakers. Right. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for the mothers, if it wasn't for the grandmothers out there that was really, like, buying kicks for their families, like, teaching us to keep your shoes clean. I know everybody's elders taught them to keep their shoes clean. Like, that was something... We all learned how to clean our sneakers with a toothbrush because of our mm -hmm. elders. This right. did not come from nowhere. This is something that is a part of our true culture from where we are from in these inner cities of America. So right. it's like, and it's something we all share collectively. So like me from New York, somebody from Philly, somebody from Chicago, somebody from Compton, we all had the same hood experience where somebody done took out a toothbrush and taught you how to clean a fucking sneaker. Mm-hmm. You know, and somebody taught you how to keep your feet clean. That's something that's embedded in us. And even before sneakers, shoes, right? You had to keep your feet, your shoes clean because that was a way of presentation. You know, that was the way to, to show your family that, that you come from a good family, that you come from a family that teach you to clean your shoes. So it's like, this is deeper than us. And this is deeper than, than what we put out there. And some people just got to kind of understand it, analyze it, you know, a little bit more in detail yep. but when they do then they find all these cool things out of like where we've been but there's a lot of resources like shoe museums sneaker museums are starting to be something that's popping mm. so you know there's a lot of sneaker museums and not exhibits like cause talking about real shoe museums that show like you know 1920s women were still wearing heels with rubber soles on them and calling those sneakers right so sneakers in the 1920s were with heels, kitten heels, with a little rubber yep. sole. Oh, yep. And that's how they used to play basketball and dodgeball, is with heels. But they used to call them sneakers. Like, this, this just, this is part of our history. It's, it's what evolved us. And this is what I'm a junkie for. I love, like, all history of sneakers. <laughs> right. Well, that's lacking the care. The care for history is lacking, but I mean, that's kind of something with, like, the new generation, because I noticed it with music. Like, I'm, I'm a you know, a music head and just noticing how like the kids nowadays don't care about where the music came from. It's like, I don't care about a Biggie or a Tupac or even going back any further. Like, I just want to listen to what I want to listen to. It's like, how can you appreciate I, I think I was like that, though. I didn't I didn't care where Juicy huh? came from. Like, well, I didn't care I, I, I didn't, came from. I, I was familiar because, like, my, grand, my grandfather was a, a sax player, like, and my grandparents were on the music, so we're listening to, you know, The Temptations and all that stuff on a Saturday. Yeah. So for me, I it was just too. a nice little, a nice little blend. Like, so I yeah. love music, like, all music, you know, know where it too. came from. I listen to, like, I, I have such an eclectic ear. Like, they probably think, like, I'm, like, my neighbors probably think I'm nuts because I'll put, like, one minute I'll be in alternative, the next minute I'll be in hip hop, the next minute I'm in Spanish trap, the next minute I'm listening to, I'm going from Jay Z to Pooh Shiesty. I'm like all <laughs> over the place. I'm old, I'm young. They're probably like, this girl's nuts. But mm -hmm. music, I think sneakers keep us very young is one thing because we participate in a culture that a younger generation does. So I think being able to update ourselves with music, podcasts, pop culture, we're very in tune because of sneakers. 
This is true. I agree. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Shout out to sneakers for keeping me young. <laughs> Facts. Facts. I'm going to be forever young because of sneakers. Even though my body is telling me otherwise, but you know. <laughs> wow, hell no. This summer is about to be on. I just talked to my cousin yesterday. We're going to go start playing tennis again. So I'm going to be out there. What are you Serena. using to play tennis? So I know get, my body ain't playing no get tennis. Yeah, and my Serena on. I'm going to put all these sneakers to the test. That's when I'm going to know what's the what's the fire. What's the real fire is when I put them shits on the court and see what bust out on me. I'm about to invent, <laughs> I'm about to invent scooty tennis. I'm looking for some Michelle Wee blazers. I need some Michelle Wee. They're waterproof blazers for golf. Mm. I definitely need those. There's some PEs, and I'm on the. I, I I text everybody who fuck with PEs. I'm like, I need those. I need those. I need those, because I know that they they let them go. You know, I gotta hit up Stay Puff. They let those go in outlets mm -hmm. by act, you know, because nobody was gonna buy them. So right. they put them out there in some outlets, and now I need a pair because I'm go. A sister's going golfing, and a sister needs to have those sneakers back. <laughs> They're made for golfing. They're waterproof. Golf They're blazers. <laughs> No, they're high tops though. They're blazers and they're they're waterproof and they're dope. So if anybody's listening out there, Michelle Wee, they're pink and camel. It's a remorse. It's a remorse. I didn't buy them like an asshole when I knew I should have because I knew in life I would want them. Now I'm hunting for them, so I'm putting an APB out. <laughs> and I have the bid on StockX. I put them there on StockX. I sent the picture. I sent everything in. So I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm definitely waiting. Okie dokie. Well, Hella has a, a family member she has to care for. He's been um, mm. bothering me over here on the side. Yo, and I have, I, have a, I have a puppy who was pretending that I neglected him his whole life. Like, I like, <laughs> you did. Like, no, a whole two hour. hours. A whole two hours yeah. ain't nothing. That's so. his whole life. In his mind, that's his mm -hmm. whole life. He's acting like, uh, like I starved him, that like I neglected him. He's acting like it's over, but. It's been dope kicking it with y'all and catching up with y'all and just yes. talking and catching up on all the things around sneakers. <laughs> and I hope everybody enjoyed our crazy ass. This is what we normally talk about. I just right. want everybody to know this right. is like this is our conversation. It's over usually over some is, good food. This but, is you know. us all the times. And I'm glad we got to bring it out and talk in front of you guys. So right. thank you. We gotta so much. Do, uh, we gotta, we gotta have you back birthday. for sure. For my birthday, we got to do like a city island thing. Danny's never been. I need me some seafood. Oh my god, you never been to City Island? Mm -mm. I, you know what? I didn't go. I haven't gone enough. But you know what? I made a promise. Like after, like you know, COVID. The one thing I was thinking about when we were in the pandemic was like, yo, every time I'm invited somewhere, like I'm always too tired, or I'm always passing up because. Um, I feel like an old lady. And then I was like, yo, after COVID, you just got to tell me where and what day, sis. And I'm there. Right, because I'm there. it's like, I'm going to be, I'm everywhere, yo. I got to catch up. Yeah, yo, we got to sleep for a lifetime now. Like, I'm rested up for a lifetime. Word. I'm, I'm, I'm relaxed. Look, who cool, calm, ready to go. So you let me know I'm there. We we chop it up. We'll do that. Well, everybody, I am Hella Lace, a.k.a. the best in the West. It's your favorite customizer word, customs in the building. Go get that loyal habits. Uh, that Jeff Rose, the link is in there. He's uh, He made shirts for Swoosh. Um, I'm not sure where the money is going, but I know it's going to a good place. But he's got shirts, hoodies, pins. You know, this is one of his hats. I've been hats. supporting the whole yeah. So check him out. Awesome. I am Kixie Jixi on social media. You can find everything that I'm up on and working on. And also my sneaker collection on my social media. My personal blog, curvykicks.com, is dropping this month. So you're yeah. going to get a lot of personal stories surrounding, like, each pair. Right. Um, so I have some really interesting stuff to talk about. So I'm definitely going to just let it all out on my site. So it's going to be something just really personal, but I know it's going to be really enjoyable. So follow the kid, and y'all going to know what's up with her. Her you links are in the description. Follow Guwap. Oh, and Gucci, my my bulldog, my little English bulldog, who is um, he's got a personality. Mm -hmm. um, like I his mother. I I'm the hero. Yo, I'm telling you, I guess no love no more. I guess no love after I got Gucci. I go into Supreme and they're like Gucci. I'm like, damn. I remember once everybody knew my name once. 
Mm. And it's like, and now it's like extra butter. Gucci's here. I'm like, can I get my size? And they're like, Gucci. I'm like, no. <laughs> so it's a beautiful thing. I'm glad to be his human and be the person to care for him. Okay. But um. Oh, so it's okay. all right. So y'all already know Danny Nicole, aka Caramel Wonder, Caramel underscore Wonder on Instagram. You can find me with the same name on Twitter. Um, I'm your Tada sock lady, Tada t-shirt lady. I make regular t-shirts. I make all sorts of fun stuff on my website, which is bydanynicole.com. Check it out. Purchase something from the kid. Show me some love. Peace. Bye, guys.